JP, um, yep. bakit ka siya ng audio setting mo? Kasi parang basag. Yep, I think we can start. All right. So, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Welcome to Filipino Science Talk uh, to our very first webinar for the month of April. So, uh, salamat po for uh, tuning in this morning. Uh, today, we have a special topic webinar uh, to be delivered by Professor Kevin Anthony Cizan. So, the title of his webinar is Data Science Topics for High School and College Research Projects. So uh, actually, Paul, this is a um, webinar and also a workshop. So if you have access to a laptop or a PC, that will be really helpful during the workshop. Kung wala naman po, you can just uh, stay put and uh, just, you know, watch <clears throat> um, what's being presented and then you can just go back and uh, revisit um, and try it to yourself. Um, we will we will be posting the link uh, for the note uh, for the notebook. So, uh, lahat po nandun sa sa ating either Zoom or sa YouTube channel. So, um, just stay with po kasi marami pong interesting things na mangyari ngayong umaga. So we don't want to lose you there. So next slide, please. Um, just a few house rules, po. Uh, we kindly request. Uh, for you to mute your audio and your uh, turn off your video during the webinar. If you have a question, uh, kindly reserve those towards the end. We have a 30 minute Q&A after the webinar. So if you have a uh, question or com comment, you can post it on the Zoom chat box or on the YouTube uh, comments. And you can also raise your hand on Zoom. So we will accommodate your questions as much as we can. And then also we kindly ask for you to not record our ses session because we will, we will record the entire uh, video, uh, video. So we will be posting that on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. And then of course, um, we, we, uh, <clears throat> we will give you a certificate of participation. We will post a link to, to issue the certificate of participation for the session. So Zoom chat box, YouTube live comments. And um, before you can uh, receive the certificate of the participation, uh, you, uh, you will have to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also uh, visit our website, www.philsciheart.com. And of course, uh, if you haven't, if you haven't uh, please follow us, and like us on Facebook. So uh, with that, I would like to turn over the floor to uh, Dr. Bunkin to discuss uh, the uh, Filipino Science Hub overview. Uh, Jeff, take okay. it away. Maraming salamat po, Professor Dindi. So um, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Um, um, I'm, hope that, I'm hoping that everyone is actually doing well right now. So uh, muli po, ako po si uh, Jeffrey Bunkin. Ako po ang founder ng Filipino Science Hub. So I... I would just like to spend, you know, a couple of minutes of uh, our time uh, to go over uh, to introduce Filipino science up to everyone. Because every time we have a new audience, so okay. So Filipino science up is an online platform that we founded back in 2012, and its uh, main intention is to promote the cultures of STEM education and research among Filipinos, uh, students, and teachers. So yun po yung aming layunin dito sa Filipino Science Hub. So at the moment, um, uh, the platform is being led by um, a small group of Filipino scientists from scientists from different 
parts of the world. So kami-kami po yung nagtutulong-tulong para po makapaghatid sa inyo ng mga material na pwede pong magamit para mas ma-improve pa yung uh, pagtuturo ng STEM um, at ang pag-perform ng research sa ating bansa. So we're hoping that um, you actually join us in our journey. So at the moment po, uh, across all of our platform, we have about 65,000 followers. So we're present in a number of social media platforms, um, which we'll be uh, talking about um, in the succeeding slides. But you know, we were able to grow this platform mainly because of our strategy. So um, the Philsci Hub strategy um, is focused around launching the culture of research and um, STEM education um, in the country. And the question of like, how do you actually launch a culture? So um, para po sa amin, there are two critical components to launching a culture, uh, specifically a STEM and research culture. Una po, we have to be able to um, improve our mastery of STEM areas. So kailangan mas maayos yung pagkakaintindi natin sa iba't ibang areas ng STEM. Um, and then once we have actually achieved that, um, the key is what the mind knows the hands should realize. So we're also we are, we are also encouraging our teachers and students to try to apply the things that they learn, you know, in 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 the different um, STEM areas. And we have two main programs that um, cater to the uh, that that actually um, push the envelope, um, you know, for these two components. So the first of which is the Filipino Science Hub Education Program, which we'll talk about later, and the Philsci Hub Research University. Um, ito po yung responsable kung bakit po tayo meron mga webinars ngayon. And so, again, the goal is to empower our educators para po mas maganda yung kalidad ng pagtuturo ng STEM sa atin. And then we're also building a community where Filipino scientists and STEM practitioners can more easily exchange information and mentor people in the education sector. So yun po yung aming layunin para po, yun po ang aming programa para po maabot natin ng ating mga estudyante at para mas marami ang maging mga STEM um, practitioners sa ating bansa ano po, um, to contribute to nation building. All right, so just to give you an idea, um, so we've been doing a web events for about 10 to 11 months now. Um, so um, averaging about like two events po every month um, since we started in May of last year. So um, since then, we've had, we've already conducted 24 event, events. So iba iba po yung um, class in events na yan. We have teaching webinars. Um, career guidance talks and different types of uh, training courses. So um, at the moment, po, uh, I think like after this webinar, I think like on YouTube, we're at about 300. So we have 400 live participants right now um, for, for this event. So that's going to add up to, you know, the, the 13,000 live participants that we have already trained. So Alas, mapupuno na po natin yung Araneta Coliseum sa mga napa-attend natin sa ating mga web events. And maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo sa pagbibigay uh, sa amin na inyong oras um, every weekend. So this, so the, the participation that we've actually seen, that we've witnessed from you, um, like encourages us to do this um, all the more. Kasi nakikita po namin talaga yung curiosity at saka yung pangangailangan ninyo sa informasyon. So yun po. Um, so this is Filipino Science Hub, and I would like to turn um, over the floor to Marty Mateo, who will talk about Philsci Hub Ed. Uh, thank you, Kuya Jeff. So uh, I would just like to talk about yung isa sa main programs ng Filipino Science Hub, which is the Filipino Science Hub Education Program. And the goal really is to empower the STEM educators, which are our academic frontliner. So if we are basing our statistics with our Facebook followers, we have uh, around 30,000 Philsci Hub members who are actually in the teaching profession. So uh, the goal is in, in the next 30 years, if they have like 30 students per year per educator, and uh, most of our audience are actually early career uh, teachers, so we are projecting that they will still have 30-year 30 uh, 30 career uh, for their teaching. We are projecting to produce around or to, to impact around 27 million students from this program in the future. Next slide, please. So uh, iba-iba po yung uh, offerings ng Philsci Hub Ed. Nagsimula po kami sa teaching webinars noong onset ng pandemic. And this is to aid the teachers for their uh, Online, uh, mod online teaching modalities. So uh, all of this are uploaded still, uh, are still up are, are all uploaded in our YouTube channel. So if you missed it, you can still check this out. Lalo na po sa mga nagsisimula pa lang magturo 
uh, while here, while 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 still while we're we're still here in a in a in a pandemic. So next slide, please. Okay, so we are we are also offering yung pong mga modules to aid our teachers and students. So we have uh, three module creators uh, that na ano po uh, students and graduates of the BS Mathematical Mathematics and Science Teaching here at UPLB. So sila po si na IMG Aguila, Ivy Rituya, and Mark Cortez. And gumagawa po sila ng modules for uh, biology, physics, and chemistry. And uh, ito pong mga modules na to ay merong teaching guides, class activities, and problem sets. So all of these are uploaded in our website. That's philsihub.com. And all modules are also uploaded sa aming pong Facebook page. Next slide, please. Ayan, so we are also launching a new program. So we are calling it STEM Teaching Fellowship. So we are we want to involve the STEM community uh, to also be a part of our community. So if you want to uh, uh, to be a part of Philsci Hub, you can actually be a Philsci Hub Ed Fellow. So what comes with it is a formal Philsci Hub Ed membership, and you will also be mentored by uh, practic in practical science teaching by the Philsci Hub members. And if you want to join, you can present your STEM teaching materials, including lectures and modules on an, uh, on an online STEM education platform. So we will be uh, doing screening. So kung gusto nyo pong mapabilang dito sa uh, PhilSci Hub Ed Fellow, we are uh, accepting applicants and uh, we we are accept where we are now accepting applicants and you can email us at philsihub at gmail.com for more information okay so Next gusto slide. ko lang dagdagan ng konti gusto ko lang dagdagan ng konti martino so ito po talaga yung ino-offer namin sa philsihub ed teaching fellowship is uh, the opportunity to be mentored by filipino scientists po on how to teach stem so hindi po ito eh, teachers teaching other teachers how to teach stem so ito po mas practical para paano ba natin mas magagawang relatable yung pagtuturo niyo ng STEM. Yun po kasi talaga yun. Kasi kami, yung, yung uh, main, yung core members po ngayon ng Filipino Science Hub are scientists. So we live science like on a daily basis. So yun po yung matuturo namin sa inyo. How, how to actually make your teaching more engaging. Um, how you can actually more effectively encourage your students to venture into the sciences because it's, it's a whole lot of fun. So yun po yung gusto namin encourage niyo. Actually may typo error diyan sa slide na yan. We will be, we will be releasing the information on how to um, um apply for this program on April 20, 2021. So uh, a few weeks a few weeks from now po. So uh pa, pa, bantayan niyo po yan. Okay. Ayan, so I turn the table now to Kuya JP. Thank you Marty. Uh good morning po sa lahat ng uh Uh, ng participants natin here on Zoom and also from YouTube. My name is JP Onya. I'm the head of the PhilSciHub Research University, which I will introduce now. Okay, PhilSciHub Research University is uh, our online campaign, uh, which is a webinar series focusing on uh, scientific research. And ito po yung culmination ng lahat ng uh, uh, itinuro po namin about uh, uh, conducting a research uh, endeavor. And uh, dito po, uh, ma-apply po natin lahat ng uh, special topics, lahat ng uh, courses na itinuro po namin uh, on PhilSciHub Research University. And uh, in this program, we will uh, share our best practices, uh, some best practices in conducting research. And uh, we will also share our own research experiences to add up to that uh, wealth of um, knowledge. And some tips and advices uh, kung sakaling... Uh, You are a teacher or a student uh, being part of a research project. Next slide. Okay, so PhilSciHub Research University is composed of eight mandatory courses. Um, right now, we have re already reached uh, the fourth uh, course, but uh, you can always uh, watch the past, uh, past webinars uh, in order to uh, keep updated uh, dun po sa lahat ng courses namin. So, Our next uh, course will be on April 17th, and this will be about a statistical design of experiments uh, to be delivered by uh, 
a professor from uh, UPLB Institute of Stati Statistics. Okay. So uh, eight mandatory courses, including research, ideation, literature review, all the way up to uh, poster, conference, presentation, or thesis defense. Okay. Next slide. So uh, lahat po ng, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, details on uh, Philsia Research University. So kindly just check um, our uh, launching, uh, launching campaign last uh, January. So my YouTube uh, video po yan. And... Uh, the, the link for which I will post here on the chat box and also uh, dun sa email confirmation po, uh, sa email ng uh, issuance po for, uh, for your participation certificate. So please watch out for that. And uh, I would also like to mention that we have devised uh, a Google Classroom for Phil Sia Research University. Well, we already have uh, a thousand, more than a thousand students there. And uh, you can be part of that. And I will also share the invitation link th uh, for that uh, in your email confirmation for the certificate, okay? So Phil Sci-Hub is uh, it's always present in all of our uh, platforms, mainly the our website at www.philsci-hub.com, and that contains all of our webinars, tutorials, modules, virtual lab, and some special features. On Facebook, we have 29,000 followers already and growing, and- uh, We have 30,000. 200 plus. Yeah, we just reached uh, <laughs> our 30K milestone there in Facebook. And also uh, 10,000 subscribers, almost 10,000 sub subscribers in YouTube and uh, 26K more on TikTok. Okay, so just uh, kindly uh, check our website for any updates and uh, all of our contents uh, are there. So uh, lahat ng modules po namin ay... And kindly also, uh, we'll always present on Facebook. Yep. At libre po. Libre po rin yan lahat. You don't have to Exactly. So. so, there, I turn over the screen to Mom Dindi. Thank you. Thank you, team. Um, so before we introduce our speaker, I just want to acknowledge our Zoom uh, participants. It's a full house tonight. And Last time I checked, uh, we have over 370 participants on, on our YouTube channel. So overall 470 plus and um, more are uh, tuning in. So thank you Paul, for joining us this morning. So um, without further ado, I uh, turn over the floor to Professor Aguila to introduce our uh, speaker for tonight, today. Ms. Aguila, take it away. Are you there? Yeah, we cannot. Unfortunately, my yeah, yeah. <laughs> connection is finicky, but I was saying earlier, so I hope you can hear me now. Okay? Yes, you can. So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Kevin Anthony Sison. So when I first met this uh, young lad, I'm very impressed by, of course, uh, his credentials and He's very humble about it. So to start off with, uh, he finished his Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry, Magna Cum Laude, in UP Manila. And then afterwards, he plays a PIF in the National Chemist Licensure Exam. And he didn't finish there. He actually got some MS units in chemistry and molecular biology and biotechnology, but then uh, nagkaroon ng changes sa, sa mga gusto niyang gawin sa buhay. Pero in relation to that naman, uh, he pursued Master of Science in Data Science at the Asian Institute of Management. So he finished it at 2020. So very talented si Kevin. So as you can see from his uh, work experience, uh, at very young age, he is the President and Chief Executive Officer of SCTST Review Corporation. And at the same time, uh, he is a, an assistant professor at St. Luke's Medical Center College of Medicine. So with that, I give you Professor Kevin Anthony Sison to give us an insight on data science, network science, and so on. So Kevin, so Please uh, take the floor or the Zoom. 
Good morning, everyone. So I'm glad that um, uh, I get to see you all today, at least virtually. So let me share my screen. Okay. Here. So I hope everyone sees my um, slide deck. Okay. So today we'll talk about um, some possible data science topics for high school and college research projects. No? So it's, uh, well, aside from talking about the topics, uh, of course, I have to introduce some of the different algorithms that you can use. And later we will be sharing a notebook that contains a few snippets of code no, that you can implement on your own data sets, okay? All right, so, but first, what is data science? No, so this is a huge buzzword right now, nowadays, especially you, you, uh, when you go to LinkedIn or look for a job, no, this is one of the hottest jobs. Uh, in fact, Harvard Business Review called uh, a data scientist the sexiest job of 20, 21st century. So what is data science exactly? So uh, when we look at data science, it has actually existed before. No? So data science covers a set of principles um, used in statistics, computer science, and mathematics. And then we apply it to specific problems, like classification problems. No? So when you say classification problems, we look at um, a way of identifying whether an object, let's say, is a, is, is a, uh, is a book or a, or a pencil, or uh, it could be making recommender systems, or it could be regression, meaning you want to predict a certain value, okay? So where we use certain algorithms, no? So we, data science is filled with these different algorithms as I will introduce some of them later. So I, I won't be able to cover everything, but at least we will be able to see the basics, okay? And of course, it involves the process of extracting non-obvious. So this is why we do data science, okay? We want to see patterns that may not be, uh, uh, you know, that apparent to us because, you know, uh, when we're given two variables, we can only plot X and Y, and then we can imagine that. But how about if I make it three variables or I'll make it four, no? So higher than that, it would be harder for the human mind to imagine. So how do we analyze? How do we extract insight from um, those um, information? All right. So when we look at data science, it's actually the marriage of computer science, math and statistics, plus domain knowledge. What I love about it is it's domain agnostic, meaning it can be applied to the sciences, but not just to the sciences. You can even apply it to the social sciences or even in business, like in marketing. Because in marketing, you can be able to like um, segment your customers, identify what products do they buy together. So you see, it's quite versatile. Learning it would not be, you know, just for the sciences, but for a lot of fields. So what kind of um, math and statistics knowledge are involved? So, uh, of course, uh, when you optimize models, that would involve maths. When you look at activation functions, that's math. Okay? When you are using it or implementing it on a large data set, you will be using statistics. And of course, you need to know how to code. That's inevitable. Although, guys, um, there are already platforms available wherein you just you know, drag and drop. There's even such a thing as AutoML. But of course, Automated machine learning or automated um, data science is uh, it can be fine-tuned, and you would know how to fine-tune it once you know how to program. So later we will be visiting a few line of codes. No, so don't worry, we'll be using Python, and it's readable. It's human readable. Okay, and then of course, okay. Uh, aside from having that um, computer science background or math and statistics background, we need domain expertise. Because of course, you won't be able to interpret without substantial domain knowledge, okay? That's why um, when, I, uh, when, I, when I did data science at AIM, actually I was with a lot of, um, I, I was with classmates coming from different fields. Some of them have PhDs in mathematics, in economics, in engineering, no, we and business. Then we all, you know, uh, 
sat down together, talk about our ideas. You know? So that helps enrich or extract valuable insights that may not be visible if I was only a chemist. All right, so what, uh, what skills do you need to become a data scientist? Of course, you need to know programming. Okay, by the way, we will be looking at the spectrum of or the, the, the family of different analytics jobs. No? So we have a data analyst, a machine learning engineer, a data engineer, and of course, a data scientist. So a data scientist, you would have like, um, of course, not, you need to have knowledge in programming. Data visualization and communication is a must because, of course, you need to be able to relay the insights that you have extracted. Because if you know if it's not um, acted upon by the the ones uh, concerned, then uh, what you have extracted is useless. No, so statistics is of course important. How you wrangle data when you say data wrangling, this is um, this is how we clean, process the data, and then, of course, we apply different machine learning algorithms. Don't worry. Uh, we'll differentiate machine learning later on. Okay. You need some software engineering skills to be able to deploy your models on the web. Okay. And, of course, you need to, uh, to have a solid foundation of mathematics and statistics. Okay. Particularly calculus and linear algebra. All right, so here's the analytics job families. Actually, this one is advocated by the Analytics Association of the Philippines. Or if you're taking uh, courses in DOST Sparta, so that's a great way to start your data science journey. Okay, you'd be asked to select which among the different careers would you like to choose. So we have a data steward. So basically, they're involved in data governance in an organization. So they would be the ones to enforce and organize the organization's data, okay? So they could be your data curator, data librarian, and then, of course, you have your data engineer. So your data engineer would be able to um, design, construct, and maintain these data infrastructures. Now, to apply the machine learning models, extracting insights that's done by the data scientist, okay? And then how we could leverage on this data that's performed by the functional analyst. So this functional analyst could be a business analyst or it could be a marketing analyst. Depends on the, depends on the application that um, the machine learning model uh, plans to uh, address. And then we have uh, an analytics manager. So then the manager basically is just the project manager of the entire team. Okay. So each um, job would require different skill sets, okay? So uh, it's really hard to have a unicorn. No? So what, what do you mean when you say unicorn? It's someone who has all of this. Right? And if you find him or her, you know, um, his or her salary might not, not be you know, reachable. Speaking of salaries, okay, so uh, one reason why they call it, uh, a data scientist is the sexiest job in the 21st century is that it actually pays a lot, like a lot. So you can earn like um, around half a million pesos a month from being a data scientist. Okay. So yeah, it's rewarding. But at the same time, of course, with the reward comes the challenges. It's not easy. Okay. But of course, it can be done. So you need to have grit and you need to be better me to become a, a data scientist. Okay, so let me uh, just show you or give you an overview of what um, some common terms are like AI, machine learning, and then deep learning. How are they different from each other? All right, when we say artificial intelligence, it's the bigger, the biggest umbrella amongst all of them. So it's anything that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. Intelligence, okay? So a subset of AI is machine learning. So it's only a subset. We, uh, there's, of course, there are um, some AI that you cannot call or you cannot um, describe as, as, as ML or machine learning, okay? Machine learning covers 
algorithms that um that you know that learns over time whose performance they improve as they are exposed to more and more data so basically something that you're able to train okay and a subset of that machine learning is the utilization of neural networks okay so neural networks they kind of simulate they kind of mimic how our brain works how our our neuron works so this is like ml 2.0 no so deep learning or um, the use of neural networks offer a more accurate okay a more sophisticated way of analyzing data sets but uh, there is a little bit of a drawback okay um, it's sometimes hard to be able to explain how a neural network comes up with its predictions or comes up with it with, with its outputs unlike in machine learning okay some models some algorithms are simple enough that we can understand how it classifies things okay some can be uh, illustrated graphically like a tree diagram like if you choose this then this if this then this okay but neural networks are more complicated than that so actually it's now a growing field of research on how to make neural networks more explainable on how to find um, which features are very important in helping the neural network decide on what is the output all right and of course we are here today because you want to know and what things can we apply data science in. So number one, okay, so these are just some of the possible applications. No? So you can do anomaly detection. So when you say anomaly detection, this could be anomalous transactions, anomaly in like the shapes of the figures. And of course, you're familiar with chatbots. This one would utilize natural language processing, okay? So if you're able to you know, do your research on, let's say, um, how to build chatbots that can understand Filipino, okay? And then, of course, it could be as simple as classifying your email as spam or not spam, okay? So basically, classification problems are like that, no? We would like to classify them. If it's binary classification, it's, uh, is, it one, is it this object? Is it this type or is it this type? that's for binary and then if it's multi-class classification as the name implies okay it'd be able to classify it in like you know uh different uh types and then you can yeah so that's an application of multi-class classification you have classifying news articles is it science and technology is it current events is it about leisure okay and then you can apply it in computer vision and image classification Okay, so when you say image classification, for example, you can train machine learning models to recognize a cat or a dog. Okay, so all you need to do is to train it on a large, uh, on a data set that's large enough. Don't worry, I think your question now is, where do I get such data? Later, we'll look at um, possible data sources. Okay, and then, of course, this would have like, financial applications like credit card fraud detection. So given thousands or millions of credit card transactions, how do we fish out these rare events? Okay, It's not just you know, in fraud detection that uh, we can you know, extract these rare events. Sometimes it could be like, uh, for example, in a telemarketing company, okay, we could identify contacts that could be able, that would be able to um, convert into a lead. For example, when a telemarketing company calls your house, okay, they have identified you as a, as a potential lead. So that could be a po another possible application. And then nowadays, everyone is on social media. So it's generating tons and tons of information. So we can mine data from Twitter, from Facebook, from LinkedIn, you name it. Okay, So we can use that information either for good or sometimes people use it for the bad. Have you heard, have you heard of Cambridge Analytica and how uh, it was used you know, to rig, I mean, to you know, influence people's decisions on elections? 
So as you can see, there is a good side to data science and there's also this dark side. Okay, I hope we are all on the, you know, on the good side. And then object detection. So this is very helpful in like, um, you know, in self-driving cars. Of course, you want to, uh, you want your car to recognize if it's gonna run over a person or just, uh, you know, just a branch or is it an animal? Uh, of course, there's pattern detection, okay? And then this one is very timely, diagnostic medicine, okay? They have tried training machine learning models in, in uh, recognizing whether x-ray images belong to a COVID patient or a non-COVID patient, okay? Another one is um, if you've heard about um, a group in MIT, they tried analyzing um, forced coughs, meaning people were asked to <coughs> cough on their phone. The recording is passed through a machine learning model. Then it would be able to distinguish whether that person has COVID or not. It is very accurate in determining asymptomatic cases. So once it gets an FDA approval, well, that would, I think that could change the game. Okay. What they did was during the early part of the pandemic, they collected cough from people that exhibits that are symptomatic and asymptomatic. And then using machine learning, they were able to identify okay, okay, um, which cough belongs to asymptomatic individuals, which cough belongs to symptomatic individuals. Okay. So with just our ears, we can't detect that. We need computers. We need machine learning models to do that for us. Okay. And then, of course, facial recognition. With facial recognition, this, this actually can, this is applied, you no? Know, when you, let's say, uh, when you um, go into malls, malls nowadays, um, they can identify whether you're wearing a mask or not. Okay. So insurance fraud detection, again, very timely. So maybe someone can do this uh, to evaluate fill health claims, okay? Handwriting recognition. So yeah, so because you can just convert uh, the handwriting into an image and this would just be an image uh, problem, all right? So if you were watching the K-drama startup, this is one of the areas where they tried applying machine learning in recognizing signatures, okay? Customer segmentation, as I've said, Data science is not just applied to science, but into anything that generates data. So um, you can apply it to uh, marketing. Like if you have customer transactions, let's say uh, you've realized that you may own a rewards card, right? You, have, you could have an SM Advantage card or a Robinson's rewards card. Those actually track your um, purchases, okay? So with that, your uh, Robinsons can identify uh, how frequent you shop, how expensive are the things that you buy, and then they can they can segment. They can they can identify customers that are very valuable. So they can you know up, um, give you rewards while you spend, or if they don't if they see that you're a frequent shopper but you spend less, they can upsell things to you. Okay. So as you can see, this can be really profitable, okay? You have natural language translation. Uh, That's another possible application. So uh, I'm not sure if there is a group learning or doing a natural language translation from, let's say, English to the different languages in the Philippines. Prediction of loan defaults. So this is, again, another application in the bank. When you apply for a credit card or when you apply for a loan, your machine learning model can output a probability that you would go into default, okay? Recommender systems, you see this every time you watch Netflix, okay? Or every time you buy on Lazada or, or on Shopee, okay? Like uh, this is also you bought together with this or uh, buyers also bought this. So that is a concrete uh, example of recommender systems. They tell you, they recommend what, you could like. And of course, you can analyze time series data. When you say time series data, this is um, data that changes with time. 
So you can do it on stock market data or you can do it on, you know, uh, we tried predicting. <laughs> this is the most uh, fun thing that we did in class. We tried predicting uh, the lottery numbers, <laughs> okay, because they are drawn at specific times, right? So, okay, we were able to guess like two or three. So, so our model is not that good yet. <laughs> okay, so these are just some of the topics that you can um, that you can use. Okay, but where do we get the data? Okay. Oh, by the way, so before. Before I show you where do we get the data, machine learning is actually large. Okay, so machine learning you have unsupervised learning, supervised learning, and some learning, neural networks, and then reinforcement learning. Each would come with its own algorithms. Okay, don't worry, don't be overwhelmed, as we would look at the classics later. Okay. All right. So how do we process the data? So first, okay, so uh, you get your data from your data source, okay? So you, it, it could be like multiple data sources and then you combine them, you try to validate. When you say validate, you check whether it's the appropriate data, you check um, if it's really compatible to the study or the model that you want to, um, you want to do, and then uh, we subject it to data pre-processing. In data pre-processing, what you do is you uh, check if there's any missing values, okay? Uh, you check the type of data available. Is it categorical or numerical, okay? So you explore different summary statistics, okay? And then you want to transform them into um, something that your model can learn, okay? So let's say, for example, you're uh, dealing with text data. Of course, your model can only understand numbers. You need to find a way to convert text okay, into numbers. Or let's say you're dealing with uh, molecules. Okay? You have to find a way to convert molecular structures into a matrix, into numbers, before it can be turned or before it can be used to train the model, okay? So once we have converted our data into a form that can be um, utilized in training the model, okay? Um, we can now use that and train the model. When we train the model, uh, we split the data set basically into a training set and a test set. The training set, goes into training the model and the test set will be used to evaluate the model. All right. And then your model would give you a performance metric. Okay. So let's say accuracy. You can fine tune the model. Okay. You can fine tune the model. Um, you can tweak parameters in order to achieve a higher accuracy. So when you implement machine learning models, okay, it's not just, you know, uh, uh, Oh, you know, a cookie cutter um, method for everything. You have to tweak it, okay? You have to tweak the tiniest of the hyper parameters to optimize it to get a better performance metric. So when we do model tuning, okay, when we, when we tweak these hyper parameters, we are again able to train our model and then from training the model, okay, we analyze the results that it, uh, it generates. Okay? And then after analyzing or after looking at the different performance metrics, we look at the, uh, we perform model validation. We tried now, we try now to like um, mix and match different parts of the data set and try if, if I take this part of the data set as my training, would it affect my results? After we have validated the model, that's where we move into uh, model deployment. In model deployment, uh, you basically um, deliver your model into the user. So it could be delivered via the internet, via web apps, okay, or it can be just in your local machines. And then from the users, we receive feedback. No? 
is it really performing as it as promised okay does it re, does it give reasonable results okay because um what if let's say this is a machine learning model that pre, that predicts whether uh you're a you, you you'd be a good uh credit card customer but it rejects everyone okay a absolutely everyone so of course we have to look at uh we have to look at the model okay the business analysts or the the people who would be using it should look at it and see if it really makes sense if it okay if it can still be improved we bring it back to data versioning so I, again we we can maybe it's rejecting everyone because it doesn't know uh, which customers to approve. So you add more data, and this goes on and on. It's a cycle. Okay. All right. So we all today would also look at some machine learning vocabulary. As I've said, when we um, when we train our model, okay, when we train our model. Um, it would be coming from the entire data set, okay? So our data set, the initial data set, could be split into three parts, okay? So we have the training set, okay? As the name implies, it is used to train the model, okay? So, and then we have the validation set. So we will be using this to assess the model later out, like later on. And then we have the testing set or the test set. So this is what we use to, to, uh, to check the performance of our model. So the train and validation, these are both exposed to the model. How about the test set? You don't let the model see the test set. Otherwise, if the model, if the machine learning models, they're able to see the test set, they can just memorize it, okay? They can just memorize what the, what the, uh, correct answers are and basically don't learn everything okay so basically if you are to put this into an analogy imagine this as an exam okay the exam questions are the data points in the data set let's say if it's a hundred items we would split it into to two parts 80 items you'd be giving it to your students as a form of reviewer while the remaining 20 items are the ones that actually shows up on the exam day. So the 80% is used to train your students. In this case, we use the 80% to train our model. And then the remaining part, the testing set, is what we use to check if, they, if the student or if the model has really learned. Okay. I hope that concept is clear. Okay. So in machine learning, we would split our data into generally a training set and a testing set. Within your training set, you can have your validation set. Okay. And our, um, of course, in, in a classification problem, okay, we would have a predicted class and, of course, the actual class. Okay. Here we can construct what we call a confusion matrix. So this is a um, diagram that would show us how many of the positives are actually positives how many of the positives were misclassified as positives okay so otherwise they're called false positives and then how many of the negatives are really negatives so two negatives and how many of the uh the the positives okay are labeled as negatives or false negatives so a confusion matrix looks at um all of those our predicted classes and the actual classes and to, to, to check whether our classification algorithm really works, we would calculate the, these parameters. Now, we would look at accuracy. We would look at precision, recall or sensitivity, specificity, or the F1 score. So when you say accuracy, it looks at the overall performance of the model. Okay. Predictions, I mean, uh, predictions are based on your model, right? And then they it outputs whether, um, let's say, if it's a binary classification, if it's this type or this type. Okay. Of course, we know what their actual types are, so we can construct these metrics. Okay. Sensitivity 
is a measure of um, the fraction of the true positives that you can extract from those that are classified as positives. Because as you can see, sensitivity, it's true positives. So the real positives divided by true positive plus false negative. So what does this mean? So false negatives, remember, are the positives that you classified as negative. Okay? So if you get the recall or the sensitivity, it tells you the fraction of the true positives that you're able to extract from the positives. Specificity is uh, how much uh, or the fraction of true negatives you can extract from the negatives. Okay, so to combine sensitivity and specificity, we can measure what we call the F1 score. Okay. All right. So where do we get the data? Okay. Actually, there's a lot of data sources available, but uh, let me share with you four of them. Okay. So if you want to work with data available in the Philippines, you have uh, data.gov.ph. So that's Open Data Philippines. There you can find um, infrastructure data, health data, um, science and tech data, foreign affairs, and so on. Okay. In fact, one of the projects I uh, I did uh, was on predicting whether a child would be fully immunized or partially immunized. So this was before the pandemic. This was 2019. So I didn't know back then that we would be in this type of situation. But anyway, we found the different behavioral aspects that would affect a child's vaccination. And we got data from, uh, we got data from the Philippine government. Okay. If you want like, you know, larger data sets, okay, or like, you know, you want to uh, explore data sets from other countries, you may look at Kaggle. Kaggle also ho hosts competition. So once you're proficient in building your machine learning models, okay, you can compete here and win a prize, okay? So as you can see here, um, in Kaggle, you can have like, uh, you know, they, they have a Netflix data set, um, Reddit. If you're familiar with Reddit, you have a Reddit data set, heart attack analysis prediction data set, they have a COVID prediction data set, telecom users data set, um, long images data set. You can find a lot of things in Kaggle. Okay, so you can visit those sites. Okay, when we want to look at network data, okay, when you say network, this is um, not your telecommunicate, just not just your telecommunication networks, no, but it could be. Uh, how entities are related or connected to each other. So you have here um, network data on chem informatics, social networks, of course, okay? Um, biological networks, or if you're into biology or if, or if you're into protein interactions, gene interactions, this is where you can get the data, okay? Or if you want to use data from the US, you can use their government website, science.gov. So they have a search box there to look for the data that you want. All right. So um, may I ask the hosts also to share the link for our notebook for today? So uh, if you uh, don't have the link, you can just use the QR code you find on the screen. OK. Um, to open your, your Google Colab notebook. Later, I will show you what it looks like, but let me just give you some, some instructions. Now. So um, once you've opened the Google Colab link, okay, it would um, lead you to a page, okay? It would show up some code, okay? Don't worry, we'll go over that one, okay? So I want you to click on File. Okay, and then save a copy into your own drive. Okay, because everyone will be using the same notebook, so we don't want everyone to be on the same notebook. Okay, at uh, the same time, so you just use your own copy. Okay, save a copy in your drive. Okay, and then rename the notebook to Philsci Hub underscore DS Data Science, and then your name. Okay, so by the way, what is that? What is Google Colab? So Google Colab, it's a platform where we can actually collaborate with code. It's like the Google Docs, but for code, okay? 
So the beauty of using Google Colab is you don't have to set up your own computer. I imagine I won't ask you to install Python using your command line. Okay, it's all pre-installed for you. It's all ready to use. Okay, so you can even go use Google Colab on your phone because it doesn't use uh, the processing power of your phone. Rather, it uses uh, resources found in the cloud. Okay, that's the beauty of that one. So you can code on the go. Okay, so Google is not just our source for you know. It's not just the tool for cloud computing. By the way, guys, when I say cloud computing, it's just computing, but not on your own device. Okay, okay. So you can do data science, okay, with your own computer. You don't have to worry. Oh, do I need to buy a supercomputer to analyze this large data set? Not really. Okay, because you can rent. No? You can rent instances from Amazon Web Services, from Google Cloud, from Azure. Of course, the most famous one is AWS or Amazon Web Services. Okay, so from there, you can, you can do your code on the cloud. So even if you're just using your Chromebook, okay, you can train neural networks. You can train machine learning models. It's not anymore a limitation. Okay, so the power is already in your hands. Okay, so I hope everyone has a copy. Okay. So let me just show you what it looks like. So let me stop sharing and share this one instead. Um, Kevin, excuse me. Can I everybody go. see uh, the, the link I posted on the chat? Yes, uh, I, I see it. You see it, okay. Yeah. And it's okay. also on YouTube or YouTube channel. It's, yes, it's yes. also on YouTube, right. so. Yes. Good. So you know, um, Remind lang po namin, yun pong mga walang computer, okay lang pong manood muna kayo for now. Pwede okay. naman yung balikan mamaya. Tapos, ano po, um, yung mga nasa computer po ngayon, if if your if your um device can handle it, um try to follow po uh, si ano si Kevin ko nang gagawin niya kasi this is actually a webinar workshop. So, meron po kayong actualization. So, ayan. Um here I'm actually running uh so this is Google Colab. Yeah. When you when you get the link, when you open it, it would open to this page. Okay. So as you can see, um, meron siyang a list dito for the table of contents. Okay. So you can just hover over the specific part that you want to go to. Like for example, if you just want to do regression, pwede tayong pumunta dun sa part ng regression. Or if you want to do just clustering or network analysis, but later we'll start with classification. But anyway, so again, uh, once you receive your link, okay, so just click on file and then click on save a copy and drive. So it, once you click this, it would open up to a new tab, okay? On that new tab, just change the file name. It's your own copy, okay? So, okay, aside from Google Colab, let's say you really want to run it on your computer. Let's say your data is sensitive and it cannot be shared to anyone, even Google. What do you do? You run Anaconda. So, so this is um, this is Jupyter. So this is what I use to create my um, to create my notebooks. In fact, this is a notebook I made. This is a ML cookbook that I made. So cookbook because. I listed down all the different algorithms and then with just a click, okay, I'll be able to go to the type of algorithm that I want to implement and then just copy and paste the code. Okay. Just like a cookbook. Okay. So let me go back to my slides first. No, let me just introduce first uh, supervised and unsupervised machine learning. I'm sure you're all excited in uh, running this notebook. Okay. We'll get to that. We'll get into that one a bit later. Let me just go back. All right. So again, these tools are available to you. Google Colab is for free. Now, if you need to upgrade, of course, if you need more computing power, then you have to pay for a fee. But the free um, version is enough for us to do our basic analysis. So yay. All right. All right. 
So, remember, a while ago, we talked about um, how machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence. And deep learning is even a smaller subset of machine learning. Within machine learning, actually, there are two main types of um, machine learning, um, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. To simplify, in supervised learning, your output data is already labeled. Okay. Meaning, uh, for example, no? um, you're training a model to recognize if a, uh, an X-ray image has COVID or not. The image has a label, COVID, non-COVID. Those are the labels. When we do machine learning on that, this is called supervised learning, okay? Because we have a target, okay? The target is COVID or non-COVID, okay? So each of the instances in the data, okay, are, uh, they come up with input values. So for example, the input value there is the image, and the output is COVID or non-COVID, okay? The output can be numerical. It's not just categorical or, or, or nominal or ordinal, okay? It could be uh, numerical. When it's numerical, then we transform our classification problem into a regression problem. Okay. So you would see these algorithms on the notebook, okay? So... Under, uh, under supervised learning, we have classification and regression. What is classification? Okay. So in classification, what we are predicting, okay, the target that we are predicting is either a nor, uh, e, uh, it's non-numerical. Okay? It's nominal or ordinal. For example, COVID or non-COVID, cat, dog, spam, not spam. Okay? Those are classification problems. When you say regression, we're trying to predict a value. What's an example? Okay, one data set that I like to, uh, I mean, I was, uh, I was uh, playing around with before is the OPCAT data set, okay? Remember back then when there was still an OPCAT, okay? Um, you take grades, you take the students' grades from high school, right? You have English, math, science, grade 8, 9, 10, and then you also have the components of the OPCAT, science, math, okay? You would be using that to come up with a university predicted grade. That's a number. Let's say you get 1.25 and then, you know, each campus would have their own cutoff, okay? So the output there is the university predicted grade. It's a number. It's a continuous variable. So from um, from Classification, our problem now becomes regression because we're predicting a we're predicting a number. Okay. So these are different classification algorithms that are included in your notebooks. We have the k-nearest neighbor, logistic regression, decision trees, and random forests. I'll try to simplify them. Okay, so we can get uh we can we can do our hands on now. Okay, so what's k-nearest neighbors? Okay. So in the KNN algorithm, the output is class membership. Okay. So for example, we have your data set, no? which only has two classes, red or blue. Yeah, red triangles or, um, or um, a blue square. Okay. Let's say we have an observation that's marked by that green dot. Okay. How would we classify it? Do we classify it under red or do we classify it under blue? We call it k-nearest neighbors because we would look at the neighbors, okay? We would look at the neighbors. We would look at, okay, how many of the neighbors are red and how many of the neighbors are blue, okay? So since in this particular um, vicinity that we choose, so we choose that we would only look at three neighbors, okay? So the k in k-nearest neighbors is the number of neighbors that you choose. In this case, we just choose three, no? If you have three neighbors, okay, two of them are red and one of them is blue, what do you think would be the classification of that green dot? Since a lot more is red, a lot of the neighbors is red, then we would classify that green dot as red, okay? We would classify that data point 
as uh, belonging to the red classification. Okay, so an object assigned is assigned with a class which is most common among its k nearest neighbors. So again, the 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 definition of k is quite arbitrary. Okay, so you have to define it. You have to try out um, different values of k. K is the number of um, nearest neighbors. And of course, intuitively, K is always a positive integer. Okay, you cannot have a one and a half neighbor. So you have to define, okay, a, 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 a positive number, okay, a positive integer for the number of neighbors. Okay, you can even expand it to four neighbors. When you do that, it becomes now, uh, what happens when I set, when I set the number of neighbors to, uh, no, to, to, to four, uh, sorry, to five rather. So that means we'll be, we'll be seeing the, the, the larger dotted line right here. Okay. If I set the number of neighbors to five, then this green dot won't be classified as red anymore because within this neighborhood, within the neighborhood enclosed by this dotted circle, you have three that are blue while only two that is red. Okay. So this is how the K nearest uh, uh, neighbor works. Okay. Okay, what if they have the equal, equal neighbors? So we would look at distance, okay? There are different kinds of distances, no? Euclidean, Minkowski, so, yeah. So, Kevin, actually one very quick question. I think like um, it's very important to adjust this. This was a question on YouTube. Um, and question was, are these um, Python or R codes? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to mention. I'm using Python. <laughs> uh oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot to mention. So, uh, <laughs> Python po siya lahat. Uh -oh. Python native po. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah, so when you open the notebooks, you'd recognize that the code is in Python. Okay, again, don't worry. You don't have to install Python on your devices, okay? It's pre-installed in Google Colab. All right. And then we have logistic regression. Okay. Oh, mukhang titration curve, no? Joke. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so for example, no? Uh, when you have, um, this is binary classification. So this is like category one observation. This is like category two. So for example, um, let's say this is uh, body weight, X, okay. Feature X or measurement X is body weight. Um, let's say this is classified as obese and not obese. Okay. We can try to fit a sigmoidal function dun sa ating data points. And let's say if the body weight is high, okay, then, okay, this machine learn, this logistic regression model, okay, would classify it as obese. So we would be using this sigmoid function to determine the probability that a given measurement belongs to a category. Okay? So, it actually sounds weird, no? Kasi logistic regression, pero the application is classification. Logistic regression is a classification algorithm that is used to assign observation to a discrete set of classes. Like, for example, obese or not obese. Some of them, some of the examples that we can use would be like spam or not spam, fraud or not fraud. Okay, later, I'll be showing you uh, a cancer data set. So the model would be able to distinguish between a malignant tumor or a benign tumor. Okay, so logistic regression would transform its output using this sigmoid function to give us a probability value, a probability that it belongs to this particular category. All right, and this is the easiest one, decision trees, okay. So, kasi nga, decision trees, it's like a, just a series of if-then. Okay. So, this decision tree is to determine if a given person is fit or not. So, how does, how does it work? So, we start from the root. Yeah. If the age is less than 30, oh no. if the age is less than 30, okay, meaning younger than 30, yes. Kumakain ba ng pizza? Okay, yes. Unfit. 
Okay. Pag hindi ka makain ng pizza, wow, fit. This is according to this decision tree, no? Ay, hypothetical uh, po ay talo po, hindi. <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> hypothetical lang po, tawag niyo po. Joke, lang. Uh, joke lang to, no? Hindi pa sabihin na ako pakain kayo ng pizza, you're already unfit. Yeah. Okay? So, okay. What if you're older than 30? Aray. Okay. Do you exercise? Okay. If yes, oh, you're fit. If no, you're unfit. So, a decision tree is just a set of if-then rules, no? So, madali siyang interpret kasi you know how the model decides. You can just follow the tree, right? Okay? So, the rectangles with the rounded corners, they represent the test. So, siya yung mga question. Siya yung if, in, uh, siya yung if no? And then, the test, uh, the, the outputs or the leaves, kasi, of course, this is a tree, no? So, may dapon. The leaves are the, the results. Okay? So decision trees, they are, um, they are favored because they can readily be interpreted. Okay? Kung may decision trees, meron tayong tinatawag na random forest. <laughs> okay. What's a random forest? Basically, so forest. Diba? Ang forest, maraming trees. <laughs> okay. So... Maraming trees. So, ang ginagawa ng random forest is it uses different trees. So, you construct different trees, no? Tapos, each tree I think we lost Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Okay, so medyo may technical difficulties lang po tayo. Hintayin po natin si Kevin na makabalik. Ayan, shout out lang po sa ating uh, YouTube uh, participants. Um, salamat po for uh, staying with us. Mm -hmm. We still have uh, over 450 uh, watchers. And of course, Zoom participants, full house pa rin po tayo. So, Uh, wait lang po tayo ng konti. Um, Actually, pwede tayo mag-promote ng mga events. So, oh, sige. sige. Maybe do that. Uh, let's not admit anyone. Um, moderators, let's not admit anyone um, sa meeting sa waiting room for now. Kasi baka may hindi makasingit si Kevin. Ah, oh, sige. sige. Um, um, wala yung speaker natin, no? Okay. Um, okay. So, um, we would just like to um, promote a couple of events. So, um, We are partnering up with the UPLB Chemical Society and uh, on April 10th, actually next week, they do have an event at 2 p.m. Um, Philippine time. So, meron po silang um, orientation for grades 10, and 12, uh, 10 to 12 students who are interested in pursuing um, uh, degree course in chemistry or, or chemistry-related um, uh, program. So, Dito po, bibigyan nila kayo ng idea kung what, what it's like to be a student of in chemistry. So, yun po. Um, so, bali ito po, um, it's um, April 10 again, 2 p.m. Um, we, we have posted this event sa Philsai Hub um, page. So, pwede nyo pong puntahan doon para malaman nyo yung registration um, link. And then, um, one more thing. Um, so, kakabalik lang ni Kevin. Pero ito, papasdahan ko na rin. On May 15th, meron po tayong um, yung ating training course number 6. Uh, So it's about writing a scientific report. So ako po, I have 15, almost 15 years of experience now of writing scientific report. And condense ko po ito in such a way na ma-appreciate ng high school at college level teachers at students. So yun po, kaparehas po ito nung uh, ginawa kong lecture on how to write a, um, a research proposal. Ito naman, kukumplituhin ko po yung package how to write a scientific report. So ito in a very relatable way, hindi po to textbook approach. So what I will do is I will um, distill and distill um, all of the practical aspects of writing. So yun po yung, um, ta, um, uh, watch out for that. Um, after this session, new registration link po ilalabas na namin. And then um, on June, uh, actually this uh, June 4th, Um, the, 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 the date will be modified on June 4th of, of this year as well. Um, we, ha we will have the third installment of our introduction of, of our intro lecture series. So Professor Dindiyu will uh, introduce you to the world of alkenes. 
And then, since nung last po niyang webinar ay may nangahamon sa aming sa reaction mechanism, so sinaman niyo po ako, pagbibigyan ko kayo, I will introduce you to reaction mechanism. So, papatamblingin po natin yung electrons para matuto kayo ng organic chemistry. So, watch out for that. Meron po ako dong special participation. So, um, hamon lang po kayo ng hamon kasi pinagbibigyan ko po yan. Anyways, um, going back to Kevin. <laughs> Uh, thank you, sir, for covering. <laughs> Naputol yung internet bigla. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, we're, we're ready for that. <laughs> All right. It so, I share my screen. So, let's go. Share. Bye. Bye. All right. So, as I've mentioned, there is... um. <clears throat> There, if there's supervised learning, there is unsupervised learning. It's called unsupervised if you're, if you don't have a target. <laughs> Basically, you don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> okay, so unsupervised learning um, methods could help. Okay, so it could reveal patterns that are not that obvious. Okay, so. An example would be k-means clustering, okay? So for k-means clustering, um, ito yung algorithm niya, no? So first, ang ibig sabihin ng k, again, it's just a positive integer that we, that we assign. So for example, let's say we are expecting two clusters, okay? We are expecting two clusters. So we will randomly place those two centroids okay on on our uh, on our data and then okay what we would do is we would look at how close our data points are to the centroids kasi ika classify natin siya based on how close they are so for example etong mga points na to, they are classified as red because they are closest to this Etong mga points ito, they're classified as blue kasi they're close to this one. Okay? So, after that, we would uh, compute for the new centroid. No? The new mean. Kaya siya tinawag na k-means. The new mean. The new center for that cluster. So, gagalaw ngayon yung centroid natin. So, if you compute for the new mean, gumalaw na yung centroid natin. Nandito na siya. Yung red, nandito na siya. Yung blue, nandito na siya. Okay? And then, we would do that again and again and again, okay? Hanggang hindi na gumagalaw yung centroids. Okay? So there, from your data, na hindi natin alam. We don't know what's X, what's Y. Okay? But we can find two clusters, two groups. Okay? So, paano natin malalaman yung K to use? Again, you would try out different values. And then, we would check the optimal value for K. Okay, or the best value for K. Okay, so uh, let me just show you this uh, no, table. So if you want to know the advantages and disadvantages of using the different supervised, no, supervised techniques. Okay, so regression. I, I, I hope everyone is familiar with linear regression. So Y plus MX plus B, diba? So you and I... It comes with its advantages and disadvantages. The same goes true with our trees, no? Yung decision trees, tsaka random forest. Meron niyang advantage at tsaka disadvantage. Okay. All right. So, let me introduce this one before I jump to the notebook. Okay, I hope you're all excited. Okay, so network science. At the core of complexity science is networks, no? So this is an application of, in math, we call this graph theory. Um, Stephen Hawking once said that you know, this, this coming century is the century of complexity. So it's a, it's a realm of physics. No? So complexity science, which covers network science. When we say networks, it could be, okay, maybe the first thing that came into your mind was yeah, computer network, network ng computers. Okay. You know, you can also build a network based on people, like this one. So what is this network? This network is a network of actors, and they are connected if they have appeared in, a, in the same movie. So if, if we say, for example, 
there is a movie that stars Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer. So there's a connection, okay, between them. Uh, Al Pacino and Henry Silva. I don't know him, sorry. Hindi ko nabutan. The movie Dick Tracy. Hindi ko na rin kilala to si Marlon Brando. Oh, sorry, Godfather. Ayan, so, ayan, yung movie na Godfather. Okay? So, since they start in the same movie, they would have a connection. So, to inject some technical terms, no? Um, these entities, si yung actors, no? Or yung computers, they are called nodes. Okay? Nodes. Okay? And then, the connections are called edges. So, here in this actor network, the nodes are the actors and the edges, okay? The edges represent or the edges are present if they, um, if they appear in the same movie, okay? You know, it's not restricted to computers or to people. Pwede nyo siyang i-apply into proteins. So you can apply it to biology, okay? There is, um, you can construct a network of um, proteins. So if you know that this protein interacts with this protein, you can connect them with an edge, okay? Or it could be a plant network. Like for example, this plant contains phytochemical A, this plant contains phytochemical A as well. You can join them, okay, with an edge. You can have a plant and phytochemical network. So ang daming pwedeng paggamitan na itong network analysis, okay? All of these three, yung um, computer network, network of um, actors and protein network, it can be reduced to this, okay? It can be reduced to this mathematical representation, di ba? How beautiful is that? How beautiful is you're able to convert something from real life into something, uh, into, a, into a mathematical structure, okay? And these are other examples. So you see here from the table, you have a network of um, the network, the, the internet basically is a network. Okay, the nodes are the routers and the links are the internet connections. Okay, so anong ibig sabihin na itong directed and undirected? Okay, so minsan sa edges may arrows. If the arrow is pointing to one of them, that's what we call a directed network. Pag walang arrow, edi undirected siya. Okay, like for example, kasi routers can talk to each other, di ba? Because they can send information from this router to the next or this router back to this. So that's an undirected network. Um, what does N here mean? N means the number of nodes. So as of writing ni Barabasi, he was the one who made this book, uh, there was, let's say there's 192,000 routers, okay? And 609,000 connections, okay? K is the average degree, no? So average number of connections. Um, let's look at something important. I mean, something that you might relate to. Like for example, mm, in E. coli, so for example, if you look, look at the bacteria, okay, their metabolites are the nodes. And how are they connected? They're connected if they participate in the same chemical reaction. Okay? Or it could be a protein interaction network. Okay? These two proteins can be connected if they have binding interactions. As you can see, okay, this is again domain agnostic. You can apply it basta may interaction. Okay? It could be your classroom interaction, okay? Or it could be your social network, okay? For example, friends, di ba? So, Facebook. So, may connection kayo if you are friends. Okay. Oh, let me share this study, no? Kasi, syempre, um, um, this is um, very timely kasi they, they did, they constructed a network of, um, of, Proteins from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, host proteins are human proteins, okay? And um, those host proteins that are targeted by the virus. Again, so as you can see from the diagram, these, these nodes represent viral proteins. The green ones, the sole green ones are um, host proteins. And these ones are the host proteins with... Uh, that are also viral targets. Okay, so are you? You're, maybe you're familiar with molecular simulations, no? So simulations can check 
if a given um, drug would be able to bind to a given protein. But you know, doing network analysis like this would reveal patterns not revealed by simulations. What do I mean by that? Okay, so here we are able to design or look at drugs that can target viral proteins alone or proteins that are actually targeted by the drug or um, design drugs that target just the host proteins. Okay, so those are all revealed by constructing graphs, by constructing networks. Okay. Oh, sorry. So without further ado, let me share the notebook. Okay. All right. Okay. So again, um, if you have, uh, if you've um, taken the link for this Google Colab notebook, just click on file, then save us, uh, save a copy in your own Google Drive, and then rename it. Okay. So here are um, some snippets, no? So we have covered um, different algorithms like in classification, k-nearest neighbor, logistic, decision tree, random forest. Uh, and then I'll show you some linear regression, okay? And then clustering and then network analysis. So basically this notebook is written uh, in Python. So again, so... When you create a notebook, hindi lang siya code, no? so you can also add some explanatory text. So these are the um, references I used in, in coming up with the notebook. All right. So we have, uh, you know, we've introduced what data science is, what machine learning is, okay? So when we say our data set, okay? Diba, when you have a table like in Excel, okay? Each row in our data set would represent a sample or an individual, okay? Each column would be a feature, like a description of that individual, okay? The target is what we're trying to predict. For example, no? So, balik tayo sa ukat. So, each row would represent, okay, an individual student. The columns would be the grades of the student in math, English, or a given component of the ukat. And then the target is, kung classification to, it's pass or fail, okay? Or kung regression siya, so something numerical, like the grade. Okay. So again, okay, so when we say classification, this would look at um, predicting uh, to which category does our sample belong to. So binary classification, as the name implies, would classify it under two classes, spam or not spam. Multi, multi classification, more than two classes, like for example, the movie genre. All right, so let's look at K nearest neighbors. And so I hope everyone is here. So all you need to do, guys, is by the way, when you're given this code, uh, the ones in green, you may hash. Those are comments, so those are my tiny notes to help you ex to help explain what the lines are for. No? So just in case you're revisiting this notebook, uh -huh. Um, or you're studying this at your own, okay, at least you have a guide there of what the line is for. Okay, so basically this cell is used to import all the necessary libraries. So kukunin natin yung mga libraries that we would be using. So we have, these are all um, built in Google Colab, so you just need to call them out. Pandas, NumPy, Seaborn, so they are for constructing data frames. Data frames, guys, is just a fact, uh, it's just the same as a table. My row at my column. So data, data frame, same than table. Okay. So how do we run a cell? So in your phones, maybe you see the symbol. So click the yung play na yan. Okay. So warning, this notebook is not authored by Google. Yeah, that's my... <laughs> okay. So just click play and then it would run the code. Okay. So wait for it. Because uh, as you can see, now we're trying to connect and then I initialize my notebook, and then it's connected. Yeah, all right. Or if you're using your computers, all you need to do is to press Shift Enter. Okay. So the data set that we would look at 
is the cancer um, data set. Okay, so the beautiful thing about this is we have toy data sets available. When you say toy data sets, these are data sets that you can play around with. No? So habang wala pa kayong data, these are data sets that you can implement your models on para you know how, mod how the models work. Okay, so we would be using our, um, the breast cancer data set. So this data set is found in sklearn. So kailangan lang din natin siyang kunin. So sinabi natin, oh, from sklearn, import. So that means we would be getting the um, breast cancer data set. Okay. So first, we transform our data set into a table. So this piece of code would just first load your data set. So it's a store siya. Pagka load ng data set natin, it's a store siya as sa uh, dito sa cancer na variable okay and then um, using this we would be able to construct our cancer data frame so kaya ako siya pinangalan ng cancer underscore df kasi cancer data frame yung iko construct niya so just click on shift and then enter or for those using Mac shift return okay so pag nakita niyo na na may number na siya dito ibig sabihin nakapag run na siya Kasi diba, ito, sabihin na run na yung first cell, ito yung second yun na, na run. Okay. So, to check what the table looks like, kasi syempre, diba, sanay tayo sa Excel. Okay. Again, you just need to run this cell. Run nyo lang siya. So, the, the function that we use for that is dot .head. No? So, the name of the data frame, cancer underscore df dot .head. Pag di not head, kukunin niya yung first, no? first five rows of the table. So it would display what your data looks like. So as you can see, it's nice, no? Para lang siyang nasa Excel. Okay? So what does our cancer data set contain? Okay? It contains a lot of information about a tumor. The radius, texture, perimeter, area, smoothness, compactness, and so on. But at the very end, meron tayong column for target. The target is actually the label. So, yung label natin is, does it, is it benign or is it malignant? So, if you see here zero, so kinonvert ko na siya into a number kasi again, your machine learning model, okay, for you to train it, okay, this must be converted in, uh, in, into uh, no, something that can, that can be processed by the model. So, kinonvert ko na siya into a number. So, yeah. so if you see zero, say that is malignant. If you see one, that means it's benign. So lahat ng nandito sa first five rows, malignan. Okay. All right. But if you want to know no, what each um, feature is, you know, the details, okay? Okay. All you need to do is to um, um, type in cancer.dot. D D E S C R so description so it would describe no it would describe the data set so when you run that you would see now yeah so just all right so it gives you information about the about what the radius means perimeter area smoothness and then it even includes some summary statistics, the smallest value for the mean radius, the, the largest value. Okay. If there are any missing attributes, okay. And of course, um, who made the data set. All right. Yeah. So if you want to see the full data frame, any cancer underscore df, pag yun ang ng head. Yung head, uh, we just use it because sometimes the data frames can be really large. Okay? Baka maubos yung time ninyo kakaload dun sa computer. So, eto kasi, medyo maliit lang siya. Okay? We just have 569 rows. So, 569 samples. And 31 columns, no? 30 features. Okay? And one of them is the target. Alright? So, if you want to see the size, no? May, may command din tayo for that, no? Dot shape. So, cancer underscore data frame or DF dot shape. So, as you can see, it would give you um, two numbers. Again, this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns. All right. Now, if you are concerned with 
counting how many of your samples are benign or malignant, ito na yun. Okay. So, for malignant, we have 212. For benign, we have 357 samples. Okay. So, if you want to put that into a graph, we would use Seaborn for that. Kaya bigla siyang may SNS. So, what we would display is a count plot. All right. So, ayan. Ganyan yung itsura ng data natin. Mas marami yung benign kesa sa malignan. Okay. Before you, again, remember the pipeline that I presented earlier? Um, before you change your model, you have to ensure na walang missing data. Okay? So, this is one way of checking. So, as you can see, yeah, zero. So, ibig sabihin yan, wala tayong missing data from any of our features. All right. So, since ang dami nating features, pwede naman na we just look at certain features at a time. Let's say, kunin lang natin yung, mga, yung first four. No? So, like mean radius, mean texture, mean perimeter, mean area, and of course, our target. Okay. So, what I did here is I just extracted that and created a new data frame with just those four features plus my target. Okay? Ayan. So, pinalit natin yung data frame natin. Kinuha lang natin. Hindi natin kinuha yung buong data set. Kinuha natin yung uh, counting features lang. Okay? So, pwede rin yung gawin sa iba. Okay. Ayan. So, ganun lang din. No? So, I took worst cavity, worst smoothness, worst symmetry, worst fractal dimension, and again, the target. Okay. So, I'll be using a pair plot to determine pairwise relationship between these variables. Okay, so for example, if a plot natin yung radius versus texture, radius versus perimeter, radius versus mean area. Okay, so to see how they are related. And can we differentiate malignant or benign just by looking at those plots? So again, we will be using Seaborn for that. So, ayan. So, si data set, uh, si group 1 muna. So, ayan. It's taking a while. But, kasi kumagawa, gumagawa siya ng pair plot. No? Ayan. Okay. So, remember what we did for um, group 1? We have uh, mean radius, di ba? Tapos meron tayong mean texture. So, ipa-plot niya yung mean radius sa mean texture. So, ito yon the plot ng mean radius sa mean texture. And then, we colored the points in such a way na yung blue, those are the malignant, and then one, yung benign. So, ayan, kita nyo kagad from the pair plots na if the mean radius is high and the mean texture is also high, very likely na siya ay malignant. Okay, yung two more. And then kapag yung mean radius natin ay low or small, and then yung mean texture ay mababa din, very likely naman na siya ay benign. Okay? So yeah, you are able to um, look at uh, all pairs at the same time. No? Alright. So let's do it also for the worst cavities. No? The second part. Second data set. I say second subset. Ayan. Okay. So, okay. Kung titignan natin, sino ba yung pinakamalinis? Uh, hindi magand so, if I plot worst symmetry versus worst smoothness, ayun, hindi siya good in differentiating which is benign and malignant. Kasi as you can see, yung orange and blue points, they are overlapping each other. Unlike kanina, no, na um, halos separate na yung blue and orange. Siguro better off pa na gamitin na lang natin itong worst cavity together with worst symmetry. Yun. That can differentiate it. Okay. So, when you um, prepare your data, you want to separate, you want to separate the target column, okay? Kasi yun yung pinipredict natin from the data, from the input data. So, this is what I did here.
Ayan. So, nara na yun. Nag-separate na siya. So, I stored in X yung data lang. Yung Y natin is what we are trying to predict. Okay. And then, again, from sklearn, okay, we can automate how we split the data. So, we would be splitting it into um, training and, again, testing. The proportion of the split can be controlled here. So, sasabihin mo yung test size. For example, di ba, sabi natin kanina, 80-20. So, kung 20% yung test size, and if you set this to 0.20, automatically, the training would be 80. All right. But in this particular example, I made it 75-25. Okay. So, train test split would take in the following. It would take in the data and the target. Kasi si split, siya na yung bahala mag-split niyan. So, pagka nirun nyo siya, what will happen? Yung training data, naka-store na sa X-train. Test data, naka-store na siya sa X-test. Yung labels, yung targets, nung training, naka-store na yun as, as Y-train. Yung labels for the testing data, yung targets, no, naka-store na siya as Y-test. Automatic na. Okay. So... How do we implement the K nearest neighbors? Madali lang. Ang gagawin nyo lang, tatawagin nyo lang yung sklearn.neighbors, tapos kukunin lang natin yung K nearest neighbors classifier. So here, what I'm planning to show you is how the accuracy is affected by changing the number of neighbors no? uh, that you pick. Kasi remember, K is arbitrary. I can choose three neighbors. No, kanina, in the example, when you chose three neighbors, red. Pero nung five neighbors, naging blue na siya. Okay, so we would look at, no, what is the right value of K to use? So run the cell. Ayan. Okay, so you see, you have a graph of accuracy and the N neighbors. So hahanapin natin yung may pinakamataas na accuracy. Okay, so pipiliin nyo kunyari, let's say, oh, uh, at 22 neighbors, dun mataas yung ating test accuracy. Okay, so when you create the model, again, okay, since defined na kasi si K nearest neighbor classifier, no, we would create an object, si CLF classifier, okay, isiset natin yung number na ng neighbors. Para pag tinawag nyo si CLF later on, nakaset na na 22 neighbors yung ginagamit natin kasi na-test nyo na kung anong number ng neighbors yung may pinakamataas na accuracy. Okay. So, again, these are um, parameters that you can tweak. No? So, again, di ba sabi natin kanina, paano pagka, ano, same ng equal sila, ng dami ng neighbors? We can look at distance. Meron tayong iba't ibang distance measurements. Here, what this particular model is using is Minkowski. But, of course, you can change that. Okay? You can just set the metric. Okay? So, let me show you how to change it. Um, so, for example, yeah, metric. So, as you can see, very intuitive na si Google Colab, no? Sinasabi niya na sa kanyo kung ano yung kita-type ng kasunod. So, metric equal to, all right. Here, they give you a guide. Ayan. Of the possible values na pwede. Ayan. Hanapin natin yung metric. Ayan. So, ayan. So, ang value ng metric, pwede nyo daw iset into Minkowski. So, type lang natin dito. Minkowski. Ayan. Tapos, you can run this cell again. Ayan. You can play around with the, um, with these parameters, no? Itong end jobs, when you set this to negative 1, ang ibig sabihin nun, gagamitin nyo lahat ng course ng computer ninyo to run it. So, kung nagra-run kayo na ibang bagay, okay, ililipat ng computer nyo yung resources to this one. Okay. And of course, how do we generate the prediction? No? So, ito. Yung classifier natin, i-feed natin sa kanya yung ating test data. Tignan natin kung ano yung magiging classification. Ayan. 
So pagka finig nyo sa kanya yung test data, ang ilalabas niya ay yung classification na. 1, 0, 0, 1. Again, what does 1 mean? That means the first entry on the test data, benign. Malignan. Malignan. Benign. Okay? All right. Actually, you can still improve on your results. Pa, no? Okay. We have to scale the data. <laughs> okay. Why do we need to scale? Sige, let's go back. As you can see, yung mga features ninyo, iba't iba ng range yan. Yung mean, let's say, yung, yung mean radius natin, umaabot na ng 20s. Tapos yung perimeter, hundreds. Tapos yung mean smoothness, 0. Um, 0. 0.11. How do we make sure that each feature contributes equally? Hindi dahil ito malaki yung number niya, malaki yung contribution niya. No? We have to scale it. Okay? At dito natin i-implement yun, yung scaling. Alright. So again, in sklearn, you have standard scaler. So, i-import nyo lang ulit yung standard scaler, tapos ito, ini-instantiate lang natin siya. Gumagawa lang tayo ng object na tawag natin ay SC na siya na yung standard scaler. Tapos, pag gusto nyo na mag-work yung standard scaler, you would just type in dot fit transform. Sa loob ng parenthesis, kung ano yung gusto nyo i-transform. So, we want to transform the training data and the test data. So, we have to transform, transform both kasi otherwise, the comparison won't be the same. Okay. So, yan. Okay. Na-scale na siya. Natandaan natanda nyo yung accuracy natin kanina. Mga nasa around 94%. No? Let's see, ano mangyayari kapag ka nag-scale tayo? Wala na. May spoiler alert. <laughs> accuracy improves. Okay. So, as you can see, your accuracy can now reach 96% because you scaled it. Okay, so don't forget to scale. Okay, so I hope you were not lost by that no, um, version. So ang ginamit natin dito is again yung transfer data set. So I'll be using, next naman, I'll, be, I'll still be implementing the k-nearest neighbor, -neighbor, class, neighbor classifier, pero I'll be using a simpler data set, the iris data set. So itong iris ay isang klase ng bulaklak. Okay, so again, you have to first load the libraries, okay? Kasi otherwise, magre-return nyo ng error pag hindi nyo na-load yung library pero kinol nyo na yung function. Ayan. So, I mean, na-load nyo na lahat ng necessary libraries. And then, again, what's beautiful about this, it's the iris data set is a toy data set. So, it's stored in sklearn. Okay? So, ilo-load lang natin siya. So, from sklearn kasi merong data sets, Click nyo lang in dot load, no? So, ilo-load natin yung iris data set. Isa-store natin siya as iris. So, kayong bahala kung anong gusto nyo pangalan dito. Pwede flower or whatever. Okay? So, then we can extract the features and then we can extract the target by adding dot data and dot target. Okay? Ayan. So, na-extract na natin. So, naka-store na sa features yung features and nasa target na yung target. Again, uh, we would appreciate if it's put in a table. So we transform it in a data frame. Ayan. So, okay. So again, um, pag nag naging data frame na siya, pwede niyong makita na yung table by just typing iris underscore df. So ito, may hash siya dito. So considered siya as comment. Kaya pag nirun yan, walang mangyari. Kung gusto niyo siyang mawala, tanggalin niyo lang, kung gusto niyo makita yung data frame, tanggalin niyo lang yung hash and then iris underscore df, ayan. It would give you your data. Since flowers to, no? so you're familiar with the parts of a flower, so meron siyang sepals, yun yung um, nagpa-protect sa bud, ay sa petals, pag magbabud pa lang yung flower, and then petals. So you have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and then the target, kung anong classification niya. So these are all measured in centimeters. Okay. So yeah. So as you can see, we have 150 rows. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong 115 bulaklak na na-measure at meron tayong five columns. Four columns doon yung features. No? Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Yung fifth column, yun yung target. Yun yung label niya. Okay? Ano ba yung gusto natin i-label? 
gusto nating i-label kung anong klaseng iris siya. Is it setosa? Versicolor? Okay? Uh, forgot the other one. So may tatlong labels yun. No? So ikaklasify niya siya as 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So again, let's construct the pair plots. Ayan. So, meron tayong tatlong classes, no? Tatlong species under iris. Species 0, species 1, tsaka species 2. Okay. As you can see, nilagyan lang natin siya ng color para makita natin, if I plot two variables, can those two variables different help me classify okay, the flower into any of those three classifications? So, sabi dito, Kapag ka pinalot pala natin yung sepal length at saka petal length, okay, madali natin ma-distinguish, madali na natin ma-classify kung yung flower ba ay class 0, class 1, or class 2. O di ba? Kung siya ba ay it belongs to this particular species or this one or this one. So kapag ka um, uh, maiksi yung petal length at saka yung sepal length, it belongs to this class. Kapag ka mahahaba yung sepal length at petal length, then it belongs to this class instead, to class 2. Okay? So, nakakatulong na maggawa tayo ng pair, pair plots. Okay? So, again, since measure, measurements yung meron tayo, we scale it. So, we implement the standard scaler. Okay? And then, tinawag pa lang natin yung standard scaler na hindi pa natin siya nasa-scale. Dito natin siya sa scale So, na-scale na features. Yan ang kasimple. And then, gagawa tayo ng object. Gagawa tayo ng KNN classifier natin. Dito, isi-set ko pa lang muna na yung neighbors ko ay 5. Pero pwede nyo nang baguhin yan. No? So, um, you can, again, apply what we have learned earlier. Pwede nyo tignan yung how the accuracy changes with K and set it to the right or the optimal value for the number of neighbors. So, ayan. N jobs equal to negative 1 kasi gusto kong gamitin ng computer ko, lahat ng resources na for this. Or rather, ng cloud. <laughs> Kasi this is not running on my local. Alright. So, meron na tayong object na si, ito na yung model ninyo, si KNN. So, pwede nyo na siyang tawagin, KNN. Okay? So, ano tong pipeline? Itong pipeline, this is an automated way of implementing scaling tsaka training. So, gagawin muna natin yung pipeline natin. So, yan. So, pag pinasok nyo siya sa pipe later, isi-scale na muna siya, tapos mag-detrain na siya. So, ano na yun? Automated na yun. So, again, before we start training, we have to split the data. So, may test set at training set. So, again, ang proportion na gagamitin natin dito is 75-25. Tapos, since gusto natin i-try kung ano yung magandang value ng K, okay, i-graph natin ulit. No? So dito, let's try from one neighbor, okay, so bibig sabihin siya lang yun, and, I mean, yeah, and then to 10 neighbors. Okay. So yan, so pwede nyo kunin yung may pinakamataas na accuracy. So at 6 neighbors, pwede na. Okay. Yeah. But, Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, but is there uh, another way of doing this? Yes. So we can create what we call grid search. No? So kayo lang yung magkoconstruct ng search space. San ba siya maghahanap ng tamang value ng K? Pwede nyo enumerate dito lahat ng numbers na gusto nyo i-try. So dito, enumerate ko lang 1 to 10. Okay. So yung search space, dun lang siya, dun, yun lang yung mga values ng K na itatry niya. So, ngayon, i-implement ko tong grid search to find out, okay, which is the most optimum combination. Ano ba ang pinakamagandang value ng n? Pero nakita nyo na sa kanina. Nakita nyo na sa graph, eh. Diba? Yan. And then, okay. Alright. So, sabi nung ating grid search, Pag pumili ka from 1 to 10, 
saan pinakamagandang, anong pinakamagandang value ng, neighbor, ng, ng, ng neighbors, piliin mo daw yung 6. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin, gagawa ulit tayo ng object. Gagawa ulit tayo ng model natin. So, KNN, ulit yung papangalan natin sa kanya. Okay? K nearest neighbors classifier, isa-set nyo yung number ng neighbors to 6 kasi yun ang sabi ng grid search natin. Tapos, if fit na natin doon yung ating features na na-standardize na and the target. Okay. Alright, paano nyo itetest ngayon kung gumagana ba yung model niyo? So, meron tayong, eto, syn synthetic. Gumawa lang ako ng synthetic na data. So, what if, ito yung sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. 0 0.75, 0 0.75 centimeters lang sila. ba kasi apat yun. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. So, ito yung isang observation, isang flower to. Sa saan makaklassify itong flower na to? Pag gumawa naman ako ng isang pang observation, isang pang flower, na ang sepal length, sepal width, petal length, at petal width ay tigo 1 cm, ito naman yun. Tigo 1 cm. So, this is another flower. Tingnan natin kung using our model with six neighbors, no? saan niya ikaklassify yung dalawang flowers na to? So, paano nyo i-check? So, tatawagin nyo lang yung model nyo. Diba? Kinamit natin pangalan ng model kanina ay KNN. So, KNN tapos dot predict. Okay. So, dot predict, pag pinasok nyo yung data nyo dito, ang ilalabas na sa inyo ay prediction. So, tignan natin. Alright. One, two. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Ibig sabihin, itong flower na to daw belong to class 1 or species 1. Itong flower na to na may length na tigo 1 cm, yung sepal, petal, length and width, okay? Species 2 naman daw siya. Okay? I hope that is clear, no? So, but what if, okay, you want to check kung pag gusto niyo makuha, kung ano ba yung probability na ikaklassify niya si flower into um into type 1 no? or, or into class 1 may command tayo na tinatawag na predict proba so kanina predict yung gamit natin kung gusto niyo makuha yung probabilities predict underscore proba so ipapasok niya lang ulit yung ating synthetic na uh, data no ayan so ano yung ibig sabihin nito Ibig sabihin, di ba, meron tayong tatlong classes ng flower? Class 0, class 1, and class 2. Etong flower natin na may tigpo point 75 lahat, na sepal length, petal length, petal width, may 50% probability pala siya na maklassify under class 1. 50% probability na maklassify under class 2. At 0% probability na maklassify under class 0. Ito naman, kapag ka 1 cm lahat yung kanyang sepal length, petal length, petal width, Okay, 100% probability na ika-classify siya under class 2. Okay? Yeah, so pwede nyo i-generate yung probability. So you can just imagine where this could be applied. So kanina, kung babalikan natin yung upcut natin, kung pass or fail, pwede nyo i-predict kung papasa ba yung student o mag-fail. Okay? Ano ba yung percent probability na papasa siya? O ano ba yung probability na papasa siya? Ano ba yung probability na mag-fail siya? Kasi makukuha niya yung probability for each class. Okay. So, yun. <laughs> yun yung KNN. Okay? Tingnan nyo. Ito, mabilis mag-implement ng models. Again, kung gagawin naman natin siya on logistic regression, ang gagawin nyo lang is kukunin nyo lang yung logistic regression from sklearn. So, kaya tayo may from sklearn.linear model, import. So, kukunin natin yung logistic regression. Tapos, store natin yung model in an object called log. Kasi logistic. May random state kasi siya. So, sinet ko lang ang zero. Tapos, kapag train nyo na siya, anong gagawin niya? Since gusto kong i-run yung logistic regression on the same iris data set that I had earlier. So, yung x-train na yon ng iris data set, ipapasok natin dito. Ganun din yung y-train. Papasok na lang din natin siya dyan. Tapos, click nyo lang to. Tada! Nakapag-train na kayo. Okay? So, ready na yung model na mag-predict. So, kung gusto nyo mag-predict uh, siya, edi, pwede kayong mag-try ng log.predict. 
Tapos, new observations. So, try natin. So, insert code log dot predict. So, pwedeng, again, si Colab, sinasabi niya sa inyo, pinapangunahan niya na kayo kung ano, ano yung gagamitin yung commands. So, piliin nyo na lang. No? So, predict log praba, predict praba. So, predict new observations. Di ba? Hindi natin na-store yung ating synthetic. Ayan. So, according sa ating log, log, re, log, logistic regression classifier, yung dalawang bulaklak daw belongs to species 2. Species 2. Ayan. So, kung gusto nyo kunin yung accuracy ng model, dot score lang. So, di ba? Pinangalanan natin yung model natin na log. So, log dot score. Yung accuracy niya, on 97%. Not bad. Okay? Likewise, decision 3. Okay. So, ayan, nakapag-train ako kagad ng decision tree. Tinawag ko yung model na tree. So, paano kayo mag-train? Yung pangalan ng model, dot fit. Tapos, inside the parenthesis, ilalagay ninyo yung uh, features. So, the features would be X train and the target, Y train. Tapos, pwede kayo ulit mag, pwede ba kung gusto nyo mag-predict ulit? Sige, try natin. Tree dot predict. Tapos, tingnan natin kung ano yung niya about our new observations. Okay. So, same yung sinasabi ng ating decision tree classifier sa ating logistic regression classifier. Na yung dalawang bulaklak daw kanina, na may tig po 0.75 tsaka tig 1, okay, belongs to species 2. Kung gusto niyo makuha yung accuracy niya, wow, 100%. Okay. So, how do we make sense, how do we make sense of decision trees? Diba? Paano natin palalabasin yung tree diagram kanina? Ito yun. Alright. Ayan. So, magiging conditionals na lang siya. Diba? So, if the petal width is less than this, uh, scaled kasi, kaya napansin nyo negative. <laughs> okay, scaled na kasi yan. Okay, so, ayan. So, it, it would tell you how it makes its decisions. Okay. So, Pwede ko bang malaman kung, di ba, may apat tayong features, alin dun yung pinaka-importante in predicting the classification? Pwede, no? Pwede natin kunin yung most important feature. Gagamit tayo dun ng feature importance. Kaya dito, okay, so, kunyari, di ba, kung gusto nyo makuha dun sa tree, na, sa decision tree natin, so, three dot features. Pero dito, generalize, gumawa ko ng function, okay, para ipapasok ka lang yung model. So, pwedeng tree yan, pwedeng yung log, o pwede yung KNN. Ayan. So, anong sabi? Na among the four features that we use to, to build our model, the most important feature is petal width. Okay? Petal width. Followed by petal length. Napakaliit na lang pala ng contribution ng sepal length in deciding kung anong class na mabupunta. Alright. And then, we go to random forest. Again, easy peasy. Okay? Import nyo lang yung random forest. I-instantiate nyo lang siya. I-train yung model using dot fit. Okay? Get the score. Plot the feature importance. According to the random forest naman, okay, yes, petal length pa rin, pero lumaki yung importance ng petal length. Ay, sorry, petal width pa rin, pero lumaki na yung importance ng petal length. Okay. Okay. So I hope um, classification is clear. So, eto naman, gamitan naman natin ng values, no? Ng, 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 ng numbers. Let's try predicting uh, housing prices. Okay. So, kukunin natin yung housing price, housing data set ng California sa SKLearn again. So, kukunin natin. So, medyo matagal lang. I-download niya kasi yung data set. Ayan. Tapos, dot .describe ulit or dot .de desker <laughs> to give you a description of the data. So, meron siyang median income nung block, house age, average rooms, ilan yung kwarto sa bahay, ilan yung bedrooms, ilan yung population, uh, occupancy ng bahay, lot and long. Okay? Pwede ba natin gamitin ito in predicting what will be the price of a house? Okay. So again, 
Ko convert ko lang muna siya into a table. Ayan, 'di ba? So something na you guys would appreciate. So ito yung ating target. Ito yung gusto nating hulaan. Ito yung gusto nating predict yung value ng bahay. Of course, hindi siya four dollars lang. So could be thousands, thousands of dollars. Okay. So let's do some summary statistics. So that describe. So ibibigay niya pag did not describe niya na yan, ibibigay niya sa inyo lahat ng average, yung ilan yung data, average na standard deviation and the rest. So just like before, pwede kayong tumingin ng pair plots. Medyo malaki to. Kasi ilang pairs to. Okay. So, while that is running, so, magte-train ulit tayo, no? Magte-train ulit. So, kailangan natin muna mag-split. So, same. Train, test, split. So, as you can see, hindi siya nag-run hanggang dito natatapos. Okay, man, so man. Ayan Okay, since medyo matagal siya. Siyempre, nagawa ko rin. Okay. Ayan. Malaki kasi. Pagka nag-pair um, plots kayo sa kanya, medyo malaki. Kaya siya medyo matagal. <clears throat> so, again, after nyan, mag- sa so split kayo, <laughs> pa nag-split na tayo, just like before, i-import natin yung linear regression model. So, i-instantiate nyo siya, linear regression, and then, again, paano kayo mag-train? You would use dot fit. Anong ipapasok natin dun sa dot fit? Ipapasok natin yung features at saka yung target. Ayan, tapos na siya. So, ayan, train na tayo. Napag-train na siya agad. Alright. So, in deciding or in determining the price of a house, okay, ano yung pinaka-important na feature? So, since linear regression to, di ba? So, linear regression may mga coefficients or may slope. Ano dun yung may pinakamalaking contribution to the price of house? Okay. So, ayun. Lumalabas na yung uh, income, no? So, yung income no household ay a good predictor ng magiging presyo niya. So, syempre, we can also check if the predicted prices would match that of the expected prices. Yeah. So, ginawa ko lang, did not predict ko lang siya to check on the test data. Tapos, yung expected natin, syempre, yung galing sa data set mismo. Okay. Itong Y test, ito yung galing mismo sa data set. Itong pre predicted, ito yung ang galing na output sa model natin. So, I will construct a data frame that would side by side compare the predicted and the expected. So, not bad for some. Ayan, no? Diba? Expected mo is 2.4, pero ang prediction natin is 2.7. So, it's off by some dollars. No? So, pwede nyo i-graph din yan. Ayan. So, di ba? Positively correlated yung expected natin sa predicted. So, since this is linear regression, you can generate the R-squared values. Okay. 0.59. Okay. Mean squared error. So again, error metrics lang. Tapos, pwede natin siyang lagyan ng regularization to check, to, to, to prevent the model from overfitting. So yan. So, 
Okay. So, medyo dun nga siya, no? Ang pinakamaganda, pinakamataas na natin nakuha is yung 0.6, 0.59. So, pag ginamitan nyo ng ridge regularization, magiging 0.59 din siya. Okay, anyway. Alright. So, that is regression, or again, when you're trying to predict uh, continuous variable, no? So, like, something numerical. Ito naman, pwede naman tayo mag maggumawa ng unsupervised learning. So, ito yung sa clustering. So, clustering, so again, hindi nyo alam na, hindi nyo alam kung ilang clusters talaga yung nag-i-exist. Okay? So, k-means yung gagamitin natin dito, kaya siya yung in-import ko. Tapos, iris data set ulit, guys. Kasi split ulit natin siya into target and data. Okay. Now, let's try to visualize. All right. So, as you can see, okay, if you plot sepal with with sepal length, may tatlo ka ng clusters na nakikita. Okay. Ito na yung k-means, no? So, kayo yung magdi-dictate. Uh, kunyari, tatryin nyo muna with two clusters or with three clusters. Okay. Or four clusters. So, pagkaginawa natin siya, ayan, nakapag-fit na tayo. Ayan. So what can you see? Ito, ito yung expected na. Ay, ito yung actual natin. Based on the actual data, ito yung classification niya. Ano mapapansin nyo? Hindi natin sinabihan yung model na oh, which is this class, which is this class, or which is this class. It was able to learn it on its own. It was able to um, give us na oh, meron kang cluster dito. Meron kang, um, pwede mo sila i-classify as species 1. Ito species 2. Ito species 3. So, yun yung beauty ng clustering. Okay? Okay. So, next is network analysis. Okay. So, this time around, hindi na scalar yung gagamitin natin. Network X na. So, gagamitin natin yung network X to build the graphs. So, pag tinawag na graph, siya rin yung network. So, ito, mano-mano akong gumawa ng graph. So, pinangalanin ko yung nodes na Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Tapos meron pa tayong Foxtrot Hotel and Golf. Ayan. So nakagawa na ako ng network. I-display ko na yung network, ha? Ayan. So, what can you see? Na si Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Charlie, Echo, okay, well-connected sila. So, Alpha is connected to each one of them. Echo is connected to each one of them. So, complete graph yung tawag natin dito. Okay? Si Echo at saka si Foxtrot, sila yung connect, sila yung may connection, no? Tapos etong si ang ang magkakasama si Golf, Hotel and Foxtrot. Okay? Yung groups na to, so, kasi ngayon it's very obvious because we're just looking at a small network. These groups are called clicks, no? So yung clicks, it tells you yung it same parang barkada nila, no? So, pwede nyo ma-identify, given a network structure, sino yung mga nodes that would belong to a click. Okay? So, how do we classify a, or how do we know if it's a click? So, it's a click if the nodes are intensely tied to another, to one another. Sila yung kung well-connected sila sa isa't isa, yun ang isang click. So, pwede natin palabasin yung clicks dito sa ating network. Ayan. Sabi nung Sabi nung, uh, um, nung algorithm, meron tayong may, may click na binubuo si Hotel, Golf, and Foxtrot. Okay, yeah. Sila doon yung magkakabarkada. Okay? So imagine you can do, use this on social networks. Okay? Di ba? Among your friends, you can identify who among them constitutes a click. Okay? So, si Si Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Charlie, and Echo, sila daw yung isa pang click. At yung isa pang click ay si Echo and Foxtrot. Okay? So, the beauty of this is, yun nga, it's not just applied to people. It can be applied to proteins. Okay? So, malalaman mo sinong proteins yung part of the same metabolic pathway. Okay? All right. 
And then we can also um, measure other metrics no? for networks. Meron tayong tinatawag na network centralities. So meron tayong tinatawag na degree centrality. So degree centrality, it is measuring the number of connections. So yung pinakamataas sa degree, siya yung may pinakamaraming connections. Meron tayong tinatawag na closeness centrality. So when you say closeness, uh, as the name implies, okay, ito yung kung gano'n siya kalapit sa ibang nodes dun sa network. Betweenness, kung siya ba ay um, magandang bridge, no? kasi siya yung nagko-connect dun sa ibang members ng network. Eigenvector, ito naman ay uh, kung siya ba ay napapaligiran ng mga famous nodes. Ibig sabihin, napapaligiran ba siya ng mga nodes na well-connected? Yun naman yung eigenvector centrality. So, for the network that we have constructed, tingnan natin yung mga centralities nila. Ayan. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Si Echo daw, yung may pinakamataas na degree centrality. So, again, kasi si Echo, yung may pinakamaraming connections. Diba? So, kung meron kayong, diba, kunyari, kung magkakabarkada to, kung meron kayong gusto, kung magkakalat kayo ng chismis, kung magkakarat kayo ng misinformation, kanina nyo papadaanin kay Echo. So, di ba? This one has practical in, uh, applications. Lalo na ngayon, we're living in an age of misinformation. Okay? We can identify individuals that are, you know, susceptible na magkalat ng misinformation. So, Kevin, actually, this, ito, I just cannot keep myself from asking. <laughs> Sige, <laughs> Because, you know, like, like, like we're in the age of misinformation and fake. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, has this been weaponized in such a way that, you know, oh, certain... Yes, groups? sir. Actually, okay. ginamit na to, sir, ng ano, ginamit na to ng US in capturing Bin Laden. Actually, oh, okay. the military, the US military is trained to do network science. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oo, oh, para malaman nila, oh, sino dito yung tatargetin natin para makuha natin si Bin Laden. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess like right now, ito po, um, siguro sa atin din sa mga Pilipino, ano, mga guro at mga mag-aaral. So siguro uh, ito, pinakita ni, ni, ni Professor Kevin no, how people engineer an approach, you know, to get information to you, you know, um, na medyo hindi, siguro sometimes hindi, hindi, hindi verifiable yung yung mga, yung mga na, na, na nakakarating sa inyo. So, ito po isa siguro ito sa mga possibleng mechanisms sa ginagawa ng ibang mga tao na may specific purpose. Um, hindi tayo magko-comment about that. <laughs> Pero po, ito po. So, ito yung sinasabi ni, ni Professor Kevin that you know, um you know, in whatever scientific area that you specialize in and whatever you know, like whatever skill it is that you learn, you know, it it always serve, it always functions as a double-edged sword. Yes. You know, so it can be used to, you know, um, benefit society, but it, it can also be used to cause harm. So be careful lang, ano po. So, uh, ito, gusto ko lang pong isingit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Kevin. Um, sana gamitin. Yes, sir, go lang, go lang. Oo, kung, uh, sana gamitin po natin sa magandang paraan. Kung ano man yung mga natututunan po natin. Kasi, yan, ito, actually, yung... Um, ang ganda, ang ganda po ng pagkakalatag ni Professor Kevin. So sana ma-inspire din yung mga tao to actually use the use these in the most on in, in the noblest uh, type of purposes possible. So yun po sana. Okay, Kevin. <laughs> yun. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to ano uh, no, no, I agree on that, sir. So I hope no gamitin natin to for for the good of everyone. So Yan. Uh okay. So ayan, meron ding closeness centrality, no? So, so again, si closeness is kung gaano ba siya ka, kalapit dun sa ibang nodes. So again, si Echo na naman yung lalabas dito. Meron din tayong betweenness. Si Echo kasi siya yung nagiging bridge, 'di ba? Between one click and another. So pag nawala si Echo, wala nang connection si na Delta, Alpha, Charlie, Bravo, kay Foxtrot, Golf at Hotel. Okay. Ito naman tong ano naman tong eigenvector centrality. As you can see, um again, itong eigenvector, 'di ba, sabi natin. Ito yung kung gaano kasikat yung mga ka-connect mo. Since si Alpha, Delta, Charlie and Bravo are well connected to each other. Okay. Sikat sila. 
So, ang taas ngayon ng eigenvector centrality ni Echo. Okay? So, yun. These are, uh, marami pang ibang centrality measures. No? Meron pa tayong page rank. No? So, I just showed you like yung select few na pwede nyong gamitin. Okay. And then, oh, so let me go back to my slides. Okay. So, I bet you are excited and at the same time, no? Uh, baka excited kayo and confused. Ano bang gagamitin ko? Anong algorithm ang gagamitin ko? Uh, you may use this algorithm cheat sheet. So, you can yeah, start if you have um, more than 50 samples. That's okay. So, you can proceed. But if you have less than that, please get more data. And then, use this cheat sheet to identify. No? Ano bang mag-regression ba ako? Or classification problem ba siya? Or magka-clustering ba ako? Or magda-dimensionality reduction ba ako? Okay. And yun, before I end, so I would just like to tell you about uh, how, yung data science journey ko. No? So yun nga, I was not originally a data scientist. I am a chemist, okay, by profession. Okay. So it was, it, it was a new world for me. I had to learn programming in a month. So ganun ka, pero kinaya kasi ginusto, ginusto ko talaga siya, no? So you see here my classmates, they are from different fields. May from physics, may from um, economics, mayroong business management, maraming engineering, mechanical, industrial, chemical. Okay, so we all went through the same process. We all went through the same pains, no? So maganda to kasi may mga kasama ako na iniiyakan pag hindi gumagana yung code ko. So, meron akong projects before. Isang project namin is um, for diagnosing diabetic retinopathy. So, we trained the uh, computer to recognize or to grade also kung, kung gano'n ba severe yung diabetic retinopathy ng isang tao. We created several projects Now we, we were required to present in public. And back then, it was not yet a pandemic. So, you know, cocktails were served. Tapos talagang, you know, punong puno yung uh, audience. So, it was, uh, it was an experience. It was a unique experience. And it was mentored by the best data scientists in the region. So, uh, I was mentored by Professor Christopher Monterola, who is uh, an academician, uh, and Professor Erica Tegara. So, these are these are, um, um, these, are uh, talaga, no? these are um, uh, well-known physicists na they help us, no? understand, appreciate, and apply data science. Okay. Ayun. So, yeah. If you want to connect, so, yeah, kindly scan the QR code. You can find him in LinkedIn. Ayun na, sir. Done. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Kevin. Very informative lecture. Sobrang marami po kaming natutunan. And uh, let's all give him a virtual round of applause. Uh, ako, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan. Yeah. Uh, actually, ako, uh, uh, um, okay, okay, a uh, professor in the... <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, Dr. Oh, uh, yeah. You wanna say so, something? So, actually, I, I mean, kicking off the Q&A, no? Since, you know, we're running the show, we have the, we have the, we have the privilege <laughs> uh, to actually ask the per first question. Kasi ako, um, I would like to give a feedback. Um, Kevin, maraming maraming salamat kasi, um, salamat, for most of us, um, for most of us who are non-data science majors, actually, this is the very first time that I really got exposed to data science, no? So, um, the way you, introduced the topic and you went over the uh, examples um sobrang hinimay saka relatable siya um nasusundan i wouldn't say that i'll be an expert after this but then again at the same time i'm um i was made aware of you know like the types of manipulations and you know the types of information that you can get out of it no so which is very powerful so yes. pero siguro hihingan lang kita na siguro baka pwedeng yan no pwedeng bumalik ka dun sa point na you were starting no uh, for the benefit of our teachers and students, no. Um, you're a chemist, right? Yes, uh, sir. You're a chemist. But tayo chemist din tayo. And ako parang uh, we lahat tayo meron tayong kom sa uh, subject at least like once no college, no. Um, gano ba kalayo to dun? So so ano ba yung shock <laughs> na nasan mo? And how did you go over that? Because I think it's very important. Because bakak mamaya you know intimidated yung mga teachers and students. Yes. Oh, it's so daunting. I mean, bakak mahirap siyang 
um ma-embrace ba kailangan gen- kailangan bang genius ka to, to actually learn Be- this Be- so yo okay <laughs> okay so the last uh, so before prior to data science yung coding experience ko was like what 10 years ago so basically parang limot ko na siya tapos ano pa yon si pa yung gamit namin so para talaga ako nagsimula from scratch as in uh, i had I, I had to uh practice actually yun yung isa sa mga way talaga para makuha mo siya you need to practice actually ang daming resources ngayon available okay mm-hmm. you have uh, kasi di ba pag pumapunta lang kayo sa YouTube type lang yung python ang daming python tutorials na available for free no okay. and speaking of uh, meron ding efforts ang DOST if you have heard of Sparta no so they offer um uh certification na ikaw ay pwedeng maging data analyst, data scientist or data engineer and again that is for free Huwag kayong matakot to try kasi um, wala naman mo, wala, hindi naman sasabog yung computer ninyo. <laughs> oh, hindi naman sasabog yung computer ninyo pagka sinugupan ninyo. And again, no, medyo mababa na yung barriers to entry kasi as I mentioned, okay, even with your computer or your phone, since we have Google Colab, you can do programming on the web. Mm-hmm. Hindi nyo na siya kailangan na i-run talaga sa computer ninyo kung Diba, minsan, ang bagal na ng computers natin. So, hindi nyo kailangan bumili. Hindi nyo kailangan magbayad to learn it. Ang daming resources na freely available. Yes. Okay, okay. Actually, nagkakalabasan na ng edad. Kasi nung nag-comsay kami, MS-DOS pa kami. So, siguro <laughs> parang a couple of years after the transition to, to C, parang ganyan. Yes. So, sir, kaya nga, suggestion ko sana, <laughs> no? I, palitan na, gawin na. Kasi ngayon, sir, parang C pa rin yung gamit namin sa UP Manila. Ay, Sabi ko ba? sa kanila, Turuan na yung mga turuan na yung mga students ng R or Python. So, quite unfortunately, sabi ko kahit si hindi ko alam eh. Sabi ko oh, magaling 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 kami noon sa MS DOS pero ngayon sabi ko how do you learn that? But anyways, so I uh, gusto ko lang din i-comment um Kevin no. So you actually mentioned about you know like the um potential the, the earning potential no of yes, of working in data science and sabi mo oh. pinakita doon in dollars no so yes sa ata doon almost 200,000 dollars which would yes, take how much 10 million pesos a year no kapag yes, executive ka na um yes. actually gusto ko lang i-comment to para ma-encourage yung mga estudyante sa atin saka yung mga guro dito oh. po sa US meron din ganyang programs they're encouraging even high school students pa lang na mag-train na sa data science and after that they can actually land into jobs without having to go through college. Ganun, yes, it, it really is one of, sabi nga ni Kevin, yan ay yung isa sa mga main areas of development right now na yan talaga yung magiging big thing um, you know, in the next um, you know, few decades. So, uh, if you're interested, you know, um, yeah, see, see, uh, uh, I'm not offering Professor Kevin out to everyone no? kasi <laughs> dahil sa atin 600 uh, 600 na live participants Kevin no? so there really is like uh, they really oh, wow. they're interested yeah madami congratulations like and ano, ano sila na interested sila talaga dun sa topic so you know if you're interested about you know how you can forge into a career in this um meron po tayo mga young leaders in the field like Kevin so ano bantayan niyo lang po yung yung mga posts niya sa LinkedIn kasi more likely nag nagsha-share yan ng mga article so Yon. Uh, going back to the questions that we did. All right. So, uh, like what ano, Dr. Jeff said, meron tayong mga about 600 participants. So, marami pong nagtatanong. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, i-open na po natin yung Q&A to our participants. So, actually, 12.30 na sa Pilipinas. Ano? So, feel free to grab your lunch while... <laughs> <laughs> While you're Habang nakikinig po kayo sa sagahan namin. Uh, uh, <laughs> but thank you for ano, uh, staying with us. So, siguro just to piggyback ano, uh, yung sinasabi ni Dr. Jeff kanina, may, may nagtanong dito um, sa Zoom chat, chat box natin. Ano, sabi niya, ano, gano'n po katagal pag-aralan yung data science from scratch? May oh. roadmap po ba kayo na masasuggest? Oh, actually kami noon, uh, <laughs> It was a very rigorous program. Um, it took us 16 months. No, 16 months. Ang pasok namin is Mondays to Fridays. Uh, then we work as a group on weekends. Tapos ang pasok namin ay 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, oh, wow. Medyo, 
ano talaga siya, if you really want to master it, no, it really requires time. Pero what's beautiful kasi about AIM's data science program is they included business subjects. So, mm-hmm. ma- alam namin din yung business side to it and leadership subjects. So, they want to create data science leaders. But for, let's say, if you want to just learn machine learning, machine learning per se, I would say you can do it in six months. Hmm. Assuming that you have prior programming knowledge. Now. So if I were you, this is how, how I would start. I would start by learning Python. Yan. Python muna. So aral ka ng loops. No? For, uh, alal, al, yung, uh, alal niyo muna how to code in Python. And then review niyo yung calculus niyo and linear algebra. Oh. Tapos pagka okay na yung dalawa, you can now move on to machine learning. Pwede na kayo mag-jump to machine learning. Kasi habang nagma-machine learning kayo, sabayan nyo siya ng ano, sabayan nyo siya ng um, how to um, um, mine data, how to wrangle data, how to visualize data. Yan. Pagkatapos na kayo sa normal na machine learning, dun lang kayo mag-move on to deep learning. Mm-hmm. Si network science, medyo independent siya. No? So pagka marunong ka na mag-Python actually, pwede ka na mag-network science. I see. Okay. Good. So, uh, meron pong special request. So, kanina nung na-disconnect tayo, um, someone was requesting if we can go back to that random forest slide kasi doon na okay. <laughs> So, Ay. siguro yung slide lang na yun. <laughs> I-rehash okay. lang natin. So, oh, <laughs> ayan. Ayan. Okay. So, random forest, ano lang siya, di ba? Pag sinabi kasi yung forest, maraming puno. <laughs> Oo. So, marami lang siyang decision trees na uh, gagamitin. So, marami kang decision trees. Bawat decision tree may lalabas na sarili-sariling classification. Tapos, majority vote. Mm-hmm. Pag sinabing random forest, collection lang siya ng lahat ng decision trees na yon. Kasi pag sinabing decision tree, isang tree lang talaga. Oo. Iyon po. Okay. That's good. Um... We have another question about you know, the, the data science program, uh, like the curriculum itself. So the um, question to is, is there already a curricular program offering Bachelor of Science in data uh, science? Yes, actually, I think we start the University of Asia in the Pacific ng program, ng ano nila, BS Data Science. Yeah. Ayan. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, sorry. So, what's interesting is... Um, Maganda sana na meron kang ibang field muna before you get get into data science kasi maganda na yun nga may domain 'di ba kanina naalala niyo yung Venn diagram Com- computer science, math and statistics and then domain expertise. So build niyo muna yung domain expertise niyo para doon niyo gamitin yung data science. Nice. O para at least pero yung yung initial application no, uh, professor. Yes, Chris. sir. Oo. <laughs> Kasi hindi po, kasi ano to kailangan uh, application oriented po kasi siya so hindi din po pwedeng nagka-crunch lang kayo ng numbers pero hindi niya naman po alam kung saan niyo gagamitin. Yes, kung anong ibig sabihin noon the first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, okay, that's good. Um let's see. Um All right. Uh Mayor Popong is uh siguro we can uh, accommodate three more uh, two more yeah, questions. Couple, couple okay, questions. sige. Um, from Mr. Ernest Gabonada, can we classify the best model to use for a specific data, just like in MATLAB regression learner, where the oh, model yes. is run and the best RMC SE will be suggested? Yes, yes, of course. Actually, I have a code for, ano, for automating all of this. Is it? Ihahanapin niya na ita try na lahat ng models. Tapos ihahanapin niya na kung ano yung mga yes. magagandang metrics. Oh. Yung kinuwento ko kanina na AutoML, ano na yun eh, si h2o.ai, gumawa siya ng AutoML, bibigyan nyo lang sa kanya yung data, siya na yung maghahanap ng tamang algorithm for your data. So, medyo, <laughs> <laughs> pero yun nga lang, hindi, hindi yeah. mo siya alam i-tweak. Di ba? Mas maganda na alam mong i-tweak yung model. Mm-hmm. Pero grabe talaga nagiging sobrang smart ay yung systems mo and uh, sobrang intuitive na rin yung nung, nung Uh, actually, pinakita mo kanina, no? parang halos hindi ko na halos kailangan mag-memorize. So, yes. baka mamaya later on, computers uh, might, o- robots might also, you know, start like doing data science for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, you know, like I'm, but I think you know. Hey, sir, I think that's a question of ano eh, a when eh, not if eh. It will happen, sir, but when. Happen. And it's Uh-oh. been happening in all in all different areas. So you know, kaya kailangan po talaga ano um ma ma involve tayo as much as possible to 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 all uh, these different areas, lalo na of development. Kasi ang ang Pilipina. Eto eto kasi so I guess like Kevin one 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 comment perhaps as well is that with data science, hindi mo kailangan na masadong malaking ka- capital no to do things. Yes, sir. Oh, ay, halimutan ko i-share. Meron pa ng effort ngayon ng ano, ang DTI to make okay. the Philippines as an AI, pow- AI hub. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, yung professors ko, si Prof. Chris Monterola and Prof. Erica Legara, they're helping the Department of Trade and Industry to create an AI roadmap para mm-hmm. i-harmonize ang lahat ng AI efforts ng iba't ibang agencies ng government. So, you have DOST for providing training. Tapos, yun, yung we're trying to build smart cities. Kasi I'm proud to share that si Sir Chris and Prof. E, um, they were the ones, or they, kasama sila sa, ano, sa team ng uh, A-Star sa Singapore who made that very efficient transport system. <laughs> and by the way, A-Star po kasi is, the, is one of the, uh, is, is Singapore's national laboratory. So nandun Apo. po yung, yun po, doon po nagsasama-sama lahat ng scientists nila sa iba't ibang areas doing research and development for the country so it's uh, usually it's funded by by the by the Singapore um, government so siya po yung i don't know if meron tayong ganung type ng institution sa atin no? sana nga sir oh, ah tayo tayo <laughs> we have How the brains though i mean I, 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 i myself work um for for a US government laboratory for four years so alam ko yung kapasidad ng ganyan sana no sa Pilipinas magkaroon sana <laughs> Ayan, siguro, one last question. Um, uh, one last question. So we have a question from uh, Mr. Marlo Fabia. Since data science is an emerging technology, what are the key improvement areas? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for me, no? Data collection. Ako, ang, <laughs> kasi if you look at different agencies in the, here in the Philippines, butas-butas yung data nila. <laughs> so dapat dun pa lang, syempre, how can you train a model kung you're training it on junk data. Kailangan, maganda yung data. So, kailangan natin simulan na i-harmonize ito. Yung how we collect data, how we uh, store and process the data. So, yun talaga. We have to start with the fundamentals. We have to you know, start with data collection. <laughs> And then just one one very important note since we were we you, you guys like you guys mentioned like a very important you know aspect of data science or so data collection. So siguro Kevin um could you make a comment is 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 like would our high school um um students and teachers be able to participate in in such an effort you know kasi kung wala pa sila doon eh so, mahirap ma- maabot yung level of expertise sa data science at the high school level but at the but at the very least so do you think if they would perform science investigatory projects focus on data collection you know is this something that could contribute to 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 what you guys are doing yes sir actually sir kung magkakaroon tayo ng parang repository of um student generated data that would be good kasi at least ma ma, ma, ma pa, magagamit siya ng iba't ibang students within the country so yep. parang repository lang kunyari nakapag-gather sila ng data on different fertilizers and effect ng growth on plants yeah. lagay lang nila doon so magkakaroon tayo ng maraming data sets to, ano, to Actually, Kevin, we made that call um, in uh, this webinar. So actually, uh, yung, yung call lang is more on yung data collection niya kasi sabi namin, baka pwede natin gawa ng mapa, no? Um, and, and, and leverage the data, baka pwede tayo makapag-recommend sa farmer na ay, ito po yung type ng soil nyo sa, sa gantong yeah. province. Ito po yung magandang timpla ng pataba, yes, ng condition. Mm-hmm. So, yes, sir. so actually, yeah. Kevin, we're we're trying to come up, we're we're ideating on a possible mechanism for us to collaborate uh, with our high school um, demographic, no, teachers and oh. and students. Um, and hopefully you can help us on that. I know I talked to you about this already. <laughs> so um um, it's only a matter of time. Um, siguro hindi pa natin to ma-announce kung kailan. Pero pagtanuhan sana natin, no. Um, yes. Ayon. Ay, Kuya Jeff, may last comment lang ako kasi di ba nabanggit mo nga yung high school. Uh, Kevin, may slide ka about dun sa mga different levels of data uh, people. Ay, yes po. Saan, yeah. 
feeling ko yung data steward, yun ata yung parang mas pasok sa mga high school students. Sama ba ako or baka iba? Pero hindi naman natin yes. nililipit yung capability ng high school students. Pero parang in a, in a more practical manner, parang yung mga data steward, sila talaga yung pwedeng pumasok yung mga high school students. Mm-hmm. Tama ba? Or it, baka mali yung... Yeah, I mean, so I guess like, Kevin, if you can make a comment, is that the basic set of, you know, of... of, of skills that you know uh, our students can at least like attain at the high school level to participate data management sir data in yan yung pag nasubukan nila mag-collect ng data okay. uh, at mag-maintain at mag-store mag-preserve mag uh, mag quality check pwede na silang data steward sir okay, okay. So, so data parang database ano parang paggawa ng database siguro okay. yes. sa mga yeah, yun yung right? yun yung at saka yeah, marami tayong mga magiging plano diyan kaya Kevin we need, <laughs> we need we need to meet after this and sa mga teachers po at mga students natin diyan watch out hindi ko po po masasabi kung next month two months or three months from now but watch out uh, meron po kaming mga gagawin um na maganda para po sa inyo lahat Ayon. All right. I think we have we've had enough question, <laughs> questions for today. So, um, ha, did, have we shared the uh, lines then? Uh, oh, oh, okay. So just like why yeah. don't we? So I I will just go through one slide. Share ko lang yeah. po. This is just gonna take um, a minute. Um, so please let me know once you can see my slide already. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so natapos po natin, matatapos na po natin yung session ni Professor Kevin um, Season. Sobrang enjoyable po. We still have uh, three web events um, uh, for, for the month of uh, April, actually, puno-puno yung kalendaryo. So next week po, we, were, uh, we will be graced by Professor Gerard Dumangkas from the Louis, Louisiana State University in Alexandria. He'll talk about chemometrics. So ito, is, is a, isa pa sa mga... Um, areas na pwedeng matutunan ng ating mga teachers at students sa high school at college level. So watch out for this. Marami po siyang possible application, just like data science. Um, we also have uh, Phil Sayhub Research University's fifth training course. It's on basic statistical design of experiment. So it, this will be delivered by Professor Lara Paul Ibal from the Institute of Statistics uh, of the University of the Philippines, Los Panos. So ito po talaga, ang daming teachers at students na humihingi ng lecture on statistics. Uh, we heard your voice. Ito po, i-deliver na namin April 17th. And then April 24th po is um, a lecture on cancer genome analysis. So ito po, ay, uh, siya po ay um, into data rin po. So medyo data, highly data-oriented ang ating buwan ng, ng Abril. Ano po. So it's going to be delivered by Professor Chad Creighton. He'll, he'll talk about cancer genome analysis. Um, he's from Baylor College of Medicine. So Baylor College of Medicine, po, by the way, is actually one of the leading um, um, educational institutions when it comes to um, the uh, medical field. So ito po talaga ay ano, um, world-class um, university. And then, a reminder po sa mga sujante, uh, meron tayo, at sa mga guru, we have Phil Sehub's Lions din. So the deadline for submission of Uh, your proposal is on April 30 of this of this month. So, so April 30, end of this month. So um, yun pong guidance kung ano yung format nandun po sa website. Um, nandun po yung link din din sa aming Facebook page. And if you have questions, send us your your email po para your messages para po masagot namin kayo if you need clarification. And then one more thing, yun pong registration link para dito sa lecture on how to write a scientific report. It has already been posted on our website and on our Facebook page. So punta lang po kayo doon. Again, May 15. And then your lecture, ni Professor Dindi on Al- Alkenes, and then Reaction Mechanism, June 5 po of, of uh, this year. So, yun po, yun lang po yung, yung aming upcoming events ngayon. Pero marami pa po kami nakaplano hanggang January 2022 po. So, humanda po kayo. <laughs> Kuya Jeff, yung i-announce natin yung tentative ev- event natin sa CompuChem, May yeah. 8 po. Uh, so, May, May, mar- 8, May 8 nga pala. We, um, so, Introduce namin the other week yung concept of computational chemistry. Ang dami nagtatanong, molecular docking um, um, studies. So we heard your request po. Um, ito, mer- May 8 po, meron rin kaming event on um, computational uh, modeling. Ayun. Okay, JP? I think you're going to do something. <laughs> okay. So, 
to culminate this activity, we would like to uh, present this certificate of appreciation to Professor Kevin Anthony Season for delivering the webinar Data Science Topics for High School and College Research Projects given on the third day of April 2021. Signed, uh, uh, Phil Sci Hub CEO and founder, Dr. Jeffrey Bunkin, and myself, uh, Head of Research, JP Onya. Okay, so uh, in behalf of the uh, Phil Sci Hub team, we would like to uh, really thank uh, Professor Kevin Season for this very productive Sunday. Sabi nga po ng mga uh, YouTube participants natin. So they enjoyed it a lot. And of wow. course, you can always uh, uh, like rehash the, the whole discussion in, on the recorded uh, uh, webinar video and try uh, all of the codes that were given there. Uh, yung link po for the notebook is on the uh, video description. So even yung mga Zoom participants natin can always uh, go to the uh, uh, YouTube recorded video and uh, try out the, the different codes. And Gago, very yeah. quick comment lang no. Um, ako, yung and dami ko pong experiences when it comes to data processing workshops na sobrang expert yung magtitrain, no? Na parang kahit sundan mo siya, minsan sa first attempt mo, hindi mo makuha. Yung, whew, pero everything is actually going off of the top of your head. Pero, ang maganda po kasi ngayon, naka-record po itong session na to, no? So, kung gusto, gusto nyo pong balikan, mapabalikan nyo lang po lahat ng steps na dinaanan ni Professor Season, ni Professor Kevin. So, yun po. Um, wag po kayo ma-discourage if ever hindi po siguro agad kayo nakarelate sa lahat kasi eh, ang dami po kasing information na siya ni, uh, yung overview po yung binigay ni Professor Kevin. But again, you have the luxury of replaying am, yeah. the video. At saka, practicein nyo po yan. Sabi nga po niya kanina, practice is key. So, hindi po kayo magiging expert dyan sa panonood lang sa YouTube. So, you have, you have to use your computer <laughs> and practice. Ayun po. So, so Professor Kevin, yung, yung notebook na binigay mo, no, the content there is not gonna change, no? It's still the same yes, content. Sir. Yes, that, sir. Oh, saka, sir, nag-save na sila ng copy, ng copy nila, so uh, oh, hopefully, okay. at least may starting material na sila. Okay. So, okay. And, yes, sir, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank everyone for uh, for letting me contribute to science in the Philippines. So, I, I, Professor, you. oh, at saka, ano, I'm, I'm for sure hindi kasi ito yung last, Kevin. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> may neural, actually hindi ko na discuss yung neural networks <laughs> sorry oh no no it's okay um 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 we um the obsessions definitely um alam mo yun um um kukulitin ka namin and then yung uh -huh. sinabi ko sa iyo Kevin I would really like to collaborate with you um on how we can actually at least get our high school community involved when it comes to data science kahit doon lang sa data collection so we'll try to come up with the project with a collaborative project so um kasi medyo malawak yung scope natin, target natin buong Pilipinas or a certain region or, or certain regions, no? So, okay. kailangan lang natin talagang pagplanuhan like how to come up with a fairly smooth mechanism na manageable for all of us. But, ayun, sa mga guru po, tsaka sa mga estudyante, uh, watch out for announcement, hindi pa po namin, pag-uusapan pa po kasi namin. But then, Kevin, maraming maraming salamat. Kasi you, you, like imagine, you know, uh, today, you have touched the lives of about 600 people. And you know, who knows how many more um, people are, are, are going to be able to watch your YouTube um, um, record, the YouTube record, recording of your of your webinar. Actually, the last time I checked, like there's about like about more than 3,000 views already on YouTube. So people are, you know, <laughs> discovering. Yeah, people are, are just are, are, are running into I... your, live, your live video. So expose ka na. So ikaw na yung nakapita nila. And by the way, I just want to make a comment po sa mga Pilipino, no? So Data science still is like fairly, fairly young fields at no Kevin. If I'm, I don't know if I'm, if I'm correct. And Kevin is actually one of the first movers, like sa generation natin, Jan. So bantayan yung po siya, kasi I, I know for sure. Um, early movers usually, um, they end up um in 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 really really good places. So we're very fortunate and we're very fortunate po uh, to be graced by Professor Kevin. So um, babantayan din po natin siya kung saan siya mga heights pa mapupunta after this. So. Ayun. And then Kevin. Yeah, Jeff, yes. May last comment na lang ako. So since ngayon ay parang overwhelmed yung mga teachers dahil nga dun sa talagang napakaraming uh, opportunities na pwede sa data science. Since babalik naman yata si Kevin in a few months, habang hinihintay po natin yung pagbabalik ni Kevin, mag-practice na po kayo ng Python kung gusto yes. niya talagang... Kung gusto niya talagang iporso yung data science. Kasi kung babalik man si Kevin, ang uh, gusto niya sigurong mangyari is lahat tayo ay knowledgeable na dun sa code na ginagamit niya. Actually, which is yeah, actually I, I will be more proactive than that. So Kevin, pwede bang hiyan ka namin ng listahan? 
Okay. Things that they can try to learn so within the next three, four, five, six months. Mm-hmm. Tapos, gagawa natin ng ano, uh, return of the comeback, sabi nga sa... <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, 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 Ayun, so, hihingyan kita. Tapos, yun po, ipopost ko sa website tsaka dun sa Facebook page. So, actually, okay. if this collaboration with with Kevin pans out, I will dedicate as a corner in our website on our on our on our website for for this kasi gusto okay. ko talaga ng ma-expose yung mga tao dito saka yung mga estudyante we have we have you know we have a you know like a, a fairly good reach sa ating mga guro at mga mag-aaral and and things are are expected to expand you know we, we're getting endorsement from the right agency so watch out for that as well so um kapit lang po kayo kasi marami pa marami pa po mahaba pa po ang pagsasamahan natin with with professor Kevin that's for sure Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully, hopefully he enjoyed this experience. So again, Kevin, super, 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 super. <laughs> super. So, all right. So, um, Kevin, siguro we'd like to invite you for a very quick debrief. But perhaps we can sure. take pictures, rin, Um, ngayon para may 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 meron na mga remembrance ang mga tao. And nabang ano pa si Professor din di kasi it's already almost one in the morning. Ayo, <laughs> please. So, bakit hindi siya makajoin sa debriefing? Okay, take lang po tayo ng picture yung po mga willing na magbukas ng camera nila um, um, at ma-post kayo yung mga mukha niyo sa sa Facebook. <laughs> Amen. Um if you if you if you're fine with that, uh, please join us po. Um so, why could you take the picture? Yeah. So, please turn on your uh, videos na lang po so we could take a class picture. Uh right. Who's gonna take up the picture, Marty? Marty. Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So one, two, three. Next page. Apat puto so. Okay. One, two. One, two, three. Tapa po last na. One, two, three. Okay na po. Thank you po. Sabing salamat po. Oh, salamat so yung, po. Yung, yung, yung link, JP, na post na ba? Yes. Okay. Um, so yung link po for the uh, certificate issuance is on the uh, chat box. So kindly check it. And uh, kindly wait po for uh, seven days until we complete uh, the issuance of all the certificates. And kindly uh, follow up with us after that after seven days. Kasi... Oh, and then, double check po yung information nyo, ano, yung right. pangalan, email address, at saka po inyong affiliation. Kasi, minsan po, nagre-reklamo po yung mga tao na ba't mali daw yung spelling. Kung ano man po yung ipinasok nyo dun sa form, yun lang din po yung ibibigay sa inyong certificate. So, kung mali po yung spelling dun, it's very likely na mali po yung information na nalagay ninyo. So, <laughs> makiki, ano na lang po, makiki-double check po. Ayun. Uli, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat sa pagtutok na na, na, na invade na naman po namin ng inyong tangalian. But and we really appreciate it. So, I, Kevin, ang daming interesado. So, definitely, oh. alam mo na, <laughs> and, uh, marami kang, marami kang may influence ang mga future students um, ng, ng data salamat science. So, again, muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Uh, maki- next week po, may event ulit tayo. So, linggo-linggo na po ito. Hanggang forever. <laughs> Hanggang forever. Ayun po. <laughs> Ayun, ingat po kayo. Maraming salamat Thank po. Thank you. Bye. Thank you po. See, uh, guys, see you sa ano, debriefing. Okay. Salamat, bye.